Good morning. Hey, Diane. Good morning. Hello, Brent. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Alex. He must How be out doing, the room. Man? I'm doing yeah. good. What's, what did you have for breakfast? I'm eating the, uh, <laughs> I've always eaten a bagel. <laughs> oh, okay. And a, a cinnamon raisin bagel and a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. okay. Hi, Jackie. How are you this morning? She must not be hooked up yet. Hey, do you ever eat your bagels with locks? I never had Come that. On. You? Yeah, good morning, morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, I've never had locks. Um, well, it's just, yes, you have. It's just Simon. Okay. It's just well, Simon. Well, yeah, it's Simon. But isn't it raw? Yeah, yeah, but it's good. It's just, okay. it's very thin. Yeah, I've it's, seen them. I've right, seen them it's, the it's so, where they slice it and stuff. Right. I, I put it on my cream cheese and I, I boil an egg and slice it. And then I like onions too, but the onions would give me heartburn. And okay. I would put a I would put an onion, you know, slice onion, a boiled egg, cream yeah. cheese, and lox. Oh, okay. Okay. You got the Beverly Hillbillies back there. But I gotta find the other one because they I can't see um Miss um with their heads. At the the way. Way. Yeah, I can't see their heads. I got yeah. another one. I'm gonna see oh, the Mr. other one. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Drysdale too. Yeah. Right. I can't I guess the picture too bad. I can't see their heads. And Miss Hal yeah, that's Callaway. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we missing Granny. Yeah, I'm a um, I'm gonna put this other one on with them. Maybe this one to come out. I can see. I think I can see this one better. Mm, granny Jethro Ellie Nan Jed. Yeah, I think I, I'm losing too. I'm missing Mr. Oh, oh see, I keep getting their heads cut off. Oh, who knows? Maybe the picture too big. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to make it little. Well, hey, Jackie. Hey. You know how you, you got to, I think you got to move it with your fingers in. Well, first so, of all, you got to get rid of all of the lower part of the LMA and, and Jed. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the lower part of the LMA and Jed. You know, take it up until her curls. Oh, well, well, what about this one? Oh, my goodness, look at Betty Davis <laughs> and Joan Betty. Crawford. Yeah, y'all remember <laughs> did, that one? Did you ever see that movie, uh, Joan Crawford? Made? Yeah. Uh, she's not yeah, Joan, I mean, her. yeah, uh, Faye Dunaway played her. You're on mute. Oh, okay. um, about her daughter. Whatever happened to Baby Jane right here? No, no that's that oh, one. No, that oh, wasn't oh, it. This one, this one was about her and her, <laughs> you know, her career. Look at the, 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 it was the Joan Crawford story. I forgot the name of the right, movie. Right, yeah. It was about, about Joan Eve. Crawford. All, all Mommy Dearest. Eve. Mommy Dearest. Yeah, Mommy Dearest. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, that's yes, what it was. Oh, that one. Yeah, Mommy yeah, yeah, Dearest. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, she played the movie. heck out of that role. Yes, she did. That's yeah. a cool kitchen. But that, yeah, that was that was a ooh, that was a tough. They made another one though. They played whatever happened to Baby Jane. It's and, um, <laughs> they only played two movies together. Whatever happened to Baby yeah. Jane and All About Eve? No, no, it's no. All you still oh, feel I, can't think of it. It's tough. I can't and think of it right now. Just they, both of them were old when they played played these pictures. Yeah. And both of them were about the same age because it was right after whatever happened to Babe Jane. This is the yeah, I don't think they got they they got along either. They didn't like each other. <laughs> no, they didn't get along. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah. Somebody playing music loud as I don't know what early in the morning. 
<laughs> so that takes the dag on um their little uh system cost more than their um than the apartment. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Well, he must be kin to the little clown that's out front of my house playing. <laughs> yes, it's take five years we later. Yeah, about I'm like early I'm in the seven thirty. Yeah, seven thirty, six thirty, seven o'clock this morning, playing some loud stuff with some vulgar stuff in, it. and I said, you know, please go somewhere else because I didn't feel I didn't sleep last night. Not I, I have a headache, and I really yeah, didn't. I know. I woke up a headache myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is crazy. Mm -mm -mm. Who? Oh, somebody opened the class. Alice coming on? Yeah, Alice is doing the class today. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Bridget, where you get that picture from? Um, that's a vintage piece. That's called that's called the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Edvard, uh -huh. Edvard Munch. Yeah. yeah, that's a really old, old, old painting. Very famous painting. Yeah, it's that's nice. yeah, it is. Cause I was looking at it. Yeah, that but is I screen. like it. Me too. You get it? Did you get it off the art thing, or or you got it off of something else? Off the art. Okay. Yeah. Your head hurting, but Ann. Mm-hmm. Mine too, and I ain't getting. Okay, I, know, I know yours. That is was hurting. a fiasco yesterday. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to go through that no more. No, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> that, that was too much. Bridget said, "I don't want to go through that no more." I know. I mean, no, that, that was that was absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't want to talk about it no more either. So let's okay. not. Okay. Uh, All right. Hey, Jackie. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Hi Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. <clears throat> Jackie, I didn't get a chance to call you back. I, it's I, okay, I dear. I call you, but I, yeah. I, things, it was some difficulties yesterday. So I, I couldn't, understand. but I'll call you um today or sometime okay. later this evening. Okay. Wherever you get your time, it is no hurry. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Well, that's right too, um, Bridge. I had pictures for you to get to you that um my sister in law and um my friend Lisa. Oh they, yeah, those two. I always put you know I put them together when I think about them. Lena and I know both Lena and Lisa. Lana. I know. And she Don't she call herself Lana? Yeah. And, Lana and um, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa, um, Lana, my sister, she sent the potato salad too. What? She I actually got both of them cooked. pictures. She actually cooked it. Yeah, over the holiday. <laughs> uh, that was <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I got them three pictures. I'm, I'm gonna send them to you later on. Okay. Hey, Bryn. Uh huh. Uh, have you been looking at that spelling bee uh, the kids about to do? The scripts out? No, I heard about it, but I, I haven't seen it. They they said they got some kids from this area, too. I hope one of them win it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know what? I just want to know how they learn to pronounce all them words and, and then remember to spell them right. Uh-huh, they sound them out. They, right. they study them, and a lot of them do it through the phonics. He used to come on Channel 4, but... Um, now oh, it's, uh, what's it on, the, uh, one of the Ion stations? Yeah, that's it, uh-huh. Because I saw the preview, uh, yeah. yeah I well, I forgot yeah. to look on the, on one of them yesterday. To see. I think it come on today, right? Today and tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. I, was I just... forgot what channel that was. Yeah, it was one of them. It was on one of them. Was, on them island stations. One, four. I wonder, do they have teachers that still uh, teach you how to sound words out and how to spell words? There, there's a few of them still left, honey. There's a few yeah. of them still left. 
in in the seven parts of speech. Mm-hmm. It took me forever to learn that. God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, look looking the look looking back at school, if it wasn't for them teachers that cared, I don't think I'd have got out the second grade. <laughs> you say the well, second grade now? I, I said if if it wasn't for the teacher that cared, you know, the teachers that took the time and, and found the the young children that wasn't getting it, yeah, and, and take and, up and their time and teach them. Because I'm I'm looking at Miss Howard and and Miss Crishlow, Mister Brown. These are the teachers that I remember that helped children. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, re- a, I remember Miss Betty West. She was our first grade teacher. She in fact she was the first grade first person who taught first grade at the new school, River Terrace, when it opened. And I was in her class and she taught phonetics and sounding out words. And she taught, she taught reading. She really, she taught, she encouraged all of us. uh, She gave each one of us a, a book at Christmas. Oh, that's and wonderful. she 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 was she was a teacher, and then my second grade teacher, she lived to be a hundred years, a hundred and four years, three years old. Yeah, one hundred and three. And she was another one that taught that, and they, they taught you. They taught children how to express themselves and how to speak the English language. But we don't teach our children how to speak the English language anymore. Good morning, right. beautiful people. How you all doing? Good love morning. you all. Good morning. Good morning. Love you back. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Need, need some love this morning. Good morning, Lily Dale. Morning. Good morning. Well, somebody's having a disagreement going on. Like getting ready for school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's too late for school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm volunteering at an elementary school. I apologize. That's oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing the foster grandparent um, program? Uh, I don't think so. All I know, I'm just volunteering. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm volunteering pre-K. Um, my niece is a teacher, and uh-huh. I did the credentials so I could be a part of it. And so that's what I'm doing. Oh, oh that's, that's nice. Uh, uh-huh. That's nice. That's Thank nice. you. Thank you. Look, they probably can teach you how to work the app. <laughs> you got you know right. what? They probably could for real. Hi, everyone, <laughs> how are you? Good morning, Good morning, Alex. Morning, Alex. Good morning, Alex. Morning, Alex. morning, Hi, morning Alex. Nice to see you. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone. Hello. How was everyone's Hi. holiday weekend? Good, good, Alex. Pleasure. Holiday weekend great. was great. Well, it could have been better. Nice better. and quiet. Good morning, oh, Alex. Well, hello, hello, hello. Well, I got uh, chased by a buzzer. Oh, <laughs> oh God. I am um, at the I, cemetery. Uh, yeah, I grilled out myself. So me chase. and my friend got uh, you know, we cooked chicken, pork, beef, seafood, all that stuff. So um oh. I I did that and then pretty much relaxed the rest of the weekend. So oh. um, you I, I hope nobody, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, mean, did, did, did you did you forget somebody that, that loves seafood and you you didn't call me? I'm so hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, it was gone before we even packed up. I, I know that's I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I know mm-hmm. that's right. <laughs> but, but yes, I hope everyone enjoyed it um, yesterday's programming, and it's uh, always nice to be back after a long weekend. And I always have fun doing this, so 
I really look forward to it. So before we get started today, you know, I always like to just go over um, the rest of the week for you guys. So uh, again, just uh, this email will an answers most of your questions about any of the programming and what's going on for each session. So please make sure that you read this email every day. Um, today is the start of the uh, Scripps National Spelling Bee that's um, on TV. So I think it's on a ION channel and it's going on for a few days. But uh, fun fact, I twice, um, I got to the, not the TV level, but the state level before. I got to the state level of the Spelling Bee in fifth grade. And then I did it in seventh grade. So I was able to go to NBC and um, that actually was televised, but it was just a, um, just the state level. So I got further the second time, but uh, each time was fun. And I, I loved uh, learning how to spell and uh, learn about words. So that was pretty fun. You um, was a to... smart kid. <laughs> thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. It was and, fun. And, and later on, I just got a few questions to ask. Later on, Alex, not right now. Go ahead. Okay. Go thank you. I appreciate that, Diane. Yes. Yeah, so today we'll be going over a little bit about um, Apple's history and just doing a mid-year app review for you guys. Um, it's been about six months since we started these advanced trainings and uh, I like to just go over each of the apps in case you guys missed any of those trainings. Um, also, we have the Lunch Club today at 12, book edition with Crystal. Um, she'll be going over the Dick Gregory book um, as before. And this afternoon, it's not a regular module. It's, we're actually going to be covering security features on your iPad. And three iPad accessories will be awarded as door prizes. So be sure that you stick on for that. On Thursday, we have the Lunch Club with Caroline. And at 1.30, we have Cyber mm. Senior. That's our uh, guest for Thursday. She's been talking about the Google Workspace apps, which is uh, pretty interesting. And last but not least, we have our first movie of the month at 6 o'clock. Um, we'll be um, showing The Woman King, the movie that you guys bought on a Friday with Teresa. So she'll be um, showing that movie to you guys on Friday. Um, our advanced training will be covering QR codes again. And in the afternoon, we'll be doing the same thing, security features, but part two. Again, three accessories will be awarded as door prizes. So uh, please look forward to that. Of course, we have the uh, library flyer. So if we ever need some in-person assistance or, uh, you know, you just want to, you know, do something and uh, learn some information, you can come to the libraries and they're always listed here uh, for upcoming booked and confirmed. Um, we have this flyer for a Juneteenth event that someone suggested, and this uh, is the last week of May. So I highlighted Dr. Brene Brown and how she advocated for mental health in different ways. So please uh, read that, I'm just learning more. And um, as you can see, she has a show on HBO Max. So please read up on uh, her and her contributions. They're quite interesting. Um, last but not least, these are all the emails that you can email for assistance. So if um, you ask for help from, um, you know, from either myself or my colleagues and um, we just don't happen to get to you, um, just please uh, take advantage of the emails, especially the help desk email. They are just iPad general. Like if you need help with anything, please email the help desk at the email that you see there or the 800-6868 number. They are there to assist. And if um, you call them and they assist you, they'll of course let the original person know that they did and any other things that we may need to do. So it um, definitely helps us out. Um, I know we have a lot on our plate, so just take advantage of these emails so that way we can, you know, better assist you and give you better service in general. So that is the email for uh, today. Just to make sure you guys keep looking at this email every day, Monday through Friday. Today, we'll be covering, uh, again, Apple's history and doing a mid-year app review. So nothing too new, um, a little more um, just informational, but definitely interesting. So um, if you have any questions, please raise your hand um, and I'll answer them at the end of the, at the session. If um, you put it in the chat, I may, may be able to answer it right then and there. So um, just please, be mindful of uh, if you're on mute or not. We just want to make sure that everyone gets the information as best they can. So please uh, keep yourself on mute if you're not um, speaking. Also, please just make sure your name is showing on Zoom. So we have an iPad user, not sure who they are. Please rename yourself. And, um, you know, so that way you can get credit for attending today's class. So just be sure to do that. But it's always 
And I, like I always say, you guys are the creme de la creme of the program. So it's always my pleasure to present for you guys. So um, if you could give me a second, I'd appreciate reading this disclaimer. Um, WildTech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by WildTech, including but not limited to mobile and device applications and any social media pages maintained by WildTech DC Senior iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. Um, again, today we're gonna to be covering a history, a little bit of history of Apple. There's so much to this company that uh, I could go on and on, but uh, we're gonna be covering a little bit about them and their devices. Second, we'll be doing a mid-year app review, and it's gonna be an overview of select apps covered since October of last year. Last but not least, we're gonna have our usual overview and discussion. You can answer some questions, ask me any questions, and talk about how the iPad has positively impacted your life. All right, so let's get started. So first, a little bit of history of Apple. And um, fun fact, their logo or their slogan is think different. Apple Inc. is a multinational technology company founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne on April the 1st, 1976. The company played a significant role in shaping the tech industry and it has become one of the most recognizable brands in the world. Apple is known for its innovation, design excellence, and user friendly products. Some of their products include the Macintosh computers, iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, which have revolutionized uh, consumer electronics. So one of the top companies in the world. Um, this is a quick video on their logo history. The logo that we know today wasn't actually like that beforehand. So again, we're gonna watch a quick video on the logo and symbol and its history and evolution. So look, the first one, this is the Apple's original logo. The first Apple logo depicts Isaac Newton under an apple tree. Isn't that neat? <laughs> In 1977, this bitten Apple logo was designed by Rob Janoff, and the rainbow version was placed by its monochrome twin, so all black. In 99, an aqua-themed version of the logo was introduced, and it was in use until 2003. Um, I actually seen this logo when I was just in elementary school, so I, I remember it <laughs> fondly. In 2007, the designer team came up with the glass themed logo, which was used until 2013. So again, I remember this, this logo in middle school with uh, my uh, school having these type of uh, Mac computers. Today, the company uses a more modernized flat millenni millennial Apple logo, and it comes mainly in three colors, silver, white, and black. Personally, um, I kind of like the white one, it just stands out, but definitely like the black one on certain light backgrounds looks really nice as well. So white or black for me. And that's it. So that's a little bit about their logo and a little bit about their history. It's definitely the first logo with Isaac Newton under the tree. That is the coolest one to me. <laughs> Next, we're gonna be talking about the Macintosh computer or Mac. And if you look on the right-hand side, it is an example of the first Mac computer on the market. The Mac is a line of personal computers developed by Apple. The Mac was introduced in 1984 and has played a significant role in shaping the personal computing industry. 
Um, the Macintosh was one of the first personal computers to feature a graphical user interface or GUI and a mouse, which allowed users to interact with the computer using intuitive visual elements instead of text-based commands. So if, if you think about it for a second, if you think about our home screens for our iPads, you know, you see all the different icons, some of them have words underneath, some of them are different places. That didn't exist until um, the Mac came out. Everything was text-based, but now you can actually view and see different elements and it makes it much easier to navigate as a result of that. Um, the iPhone, um, since the iPhone's introduction in 2007, it has transformed the mobile phone industry and has become one of the most influential smartphones worldwide. With its innovative touchscreen interface, it allowed users to interact with the device using gestures like tapping, swiping, and pinching, as we know today. So again, it was announced in Jan on January 9th, 2007, and was released uh, on June 29th, 2007. Um, its key features were it had a three and a half inch diagonal screen, um, it had a two megapixel camera, it was a four gigabyte model, so very small storage size for $499, but they had an eight gigabyte version, um, which was $599 with a two year contract. But yes, that is how the first ever iPhone looked. So really small, kind of bulky. It has a home button with the, with the square inside of it. So very, very retro, <laughs> but cool nonetheless. Um, last but not least is the iPad. So um, as we all know, it's a line of tablet computers made by Apple and was first introduced in January 2010 by then CEO Steve Jobs. The iPad's launch marked the beginning of a new era in portable computing. The idea for the iPad emerged as Apple explored ways to bridge the gap between smartphones and laptops, providing a more portable and versatile computing device. So that's what I always say about the iPad. It's the in-between from a phone and a laptop because it's not as big as a laptop, but, but way bigger than the phone. Um, it's still very lightweight, it's very portable. So I, I really like that for uh, many, for those reasons in particular. Um, and as you can see this, um, when he showcased it, that is Steve Jobs right there showing the first ever iPad. And if I zoom in, look at that home screen. <laughs> um, it definitely looks so much cleaner, so much nicer, but you know, we all got to start from somewhere. So this was a really really good uh for you know 2010 and uh again we're gonna watch a quick video this is the ipad's first ever commercial that aired so 30 seconds but you're you're seeing a piece of history right here folks <laughs> Look at how the inbox is coming. There goes my love. There goes my love. But it's still the same idea. Wow, so interesting. <laughs> um, some of the most popular apps that are on the iPad um, include social media, so things like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, four of the most popular social media apps. Uh, there's video streaming, as we talked about before, like YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, very, very popular. Um, next up is productivity and creativity apps. So um, things like word processing apps, presentations, things like that. So my, Microsoft Suite, Google Workspace, which you'll be learning about tomorrow. Um, Photoshop, GarageBand. Um, very popular apps. Um, of course, there's gaming, uh, again, as we talked about, like Minecraft, uh, Fortnite, and a bunch of puzzle and strategy games. So those match three games, um, those card games, very, very popular. 
Next up is communication apps like WhatsApp, Messenger, Zoom, and FaceTime. So you all know what those are. Um, very important to um, communicate with others. And that's how we're you know, providing these uh, classes in the first place. So again, I'm very grateful for Zoom and its functions. Last but not least, our education apps. So you know, things that you can learn with. So Duolingo, Quizlet, Khan Academy, um, things of that nature. So these are some of the most popular types of apps on the iPad. Um, some benefits of um, your iPad, um, like we talked about before, it's, uh, it's portability and convenience. It's lightweight, portable, and easy to carry. You can um, take it with you on the road, on the bus, things like that. It's very, very versatile which goes into our next one. It has a wide range of purposes like web browsing, email, document editing, note-taking, and much more. Um, it has a user-friendly interface. It's designed for ease of use. So simply, if you can tap on the screen or tap a button and swipe your finger, then that's really, you know, just to it, just to do it, just to do it, right? <laughs> Last but not least, it has an extensive app ecosystem as we just saw. It, the App Store offers a vast selection of apps optimized for the iPad because, you know, there's the App Store on the iPhone too, but the iPhone and iPad are two different devices. So it's specifically made for the screen, for all of the different gestures that you're able to do the iPad. So Apple could have been really lazy and just ported all of those iPhone apps to the iPad and they would either look really small or the graphics might not, you know, look good. So again, it's really cool that they optimize you know the apps for whatever device that they're on so yeah those are some benefits of the ipad hmm. um next up we're going to do a mid-year app review so again all the apps that i specifically have covered since um really february january of this year but all going back to the very first advanced training that i did with you guys so let's uh take a walk through memory lane <laughs> First is the Reminders app. So again, the Reminders app makes it easy to create a to-do list, set deadlines, and organize your life. You can also create reminders with subtasks and attachments and set notifications based on time and location. So this app is already on your iPad when you first get it because it's an Apple app. So very easy to make a to-do list, things that you need to do, and uh, things that you need to remind yourself of. So um, please check it out um, if you um, have consistent things to do each day or different things to do each day. It's always good to write things down so you're more likely to accomplish them. Next up is the calendar app. So this app allows you to create events, appointments, and meetings, view all of your calendar accounts and see your events and lists, day, week, month, and year view, and add additional information to an event such as location, invitees and alerts so um, again kind of like the reminders but it, it's a little more formal but if you again have consistent events um, or online meetings that you go to that's where the calendar app is really such a great use and uh, allowing you to see your day either again either by day by week whatever view that you would like so again another at my Apple, so it's already on your iPad. So please check it out and see if it works for you. And um, we also covered the Freeform app, which we have used extensively. So you can gather ideas freely. You can put just about any kind of file in a Freeform board, um, like a picture, a video, a link, et cetera, without worrying about layouts or page sizes. You can uh, collaborate with others on it and invite people to your boards and start working in real time. And you can get creative with the drawing tools. So as you can see in the image on the right hand side, you can physically write things, you can type in text, you can change the font, um, you can work with different team members on the same page where you can collaborate with each other. So it's a great um, brainstorming um, app, but also, of course, other uses as well. So again, a new app that just came out just a few months ago on um, the iPad OS 16 operating system. Um, some one of the first sets of uh, apps that we went over were apps by Black developers. So this first one right here um, is called Black, powered by AI. So Black 
collects the news and stories from the world's greatest influencers of Black culture. With all of your Black news in one place, it has never been easier to discover the stories that keep you informed, engaged, and inspired. Some featured publications include Essence, BET, Ebony, the Huffington Post Black Voices, and more. So if you want Black-centric news, this is a great app to, um, to go to and learn from. Next up is Eats Okra, um, which is the go-to app for discovering Black-owned restaurants where food, culture, and community link. Um, this app connects 500,000 plus diners to culinary creators and restaurants, reimagining the dining experience in local neighborhoods nationwide. Um, Eat Okra features flavors of the diaspora, so you can search um, based on flavors and different cultures, Black, a Black-owned marketplace where you can purchase from uh, Black-owned businesses, and it has a community section as well, so very, very cool. So you can see all the Black-owned um, restaurants and businesses near you, and you can support them by um, going through this app and seeing what's uh, available to you. Last but not least is um, actually a game. So it's called Dots Home. It's a single player 2D narrative driven video game that follows a young black woman in Detroit living in her grandmother's beloved home as she travels through time to relive key moments in her family's history where race, place and home collide in difficult choices. This app uh, is the App Stores Awards 2022 cultural impact winner. So if you like history, um, if you like, you know, character development and things of that nature, then please play this game. Um, one really cool thing about it is there are different endings based on the choices that you make during the story. So please check out um, this game and see what you think of it. I definitely um, enjoyed it very much. Um, next up, we talked about apps by female developers because it was uh, March, International Women's Month. Um, the first app that we covered was Seneca Woman, Power, Purpose, and Connect. Um, and this app is the first app to pr provide daily inspiration and insights from women leaders designed to av advance women around the world. This app provides the tools, resources, and network that women need to fast forward. So you can look at podcast programs that are provided through Apple Podcasts. You can look at women-focused news and events and also women-owned businesses and more. So again, if you um, just wanna see what the women leaders are doing in the world, please download this app. The news is pretty great. And um, again, as interesting um, as always. <clears throat> Next up, we covered um, Daily Art, where it's a daily dose of art, art history. So this app allows you to get inspired by beautiful, classic, modern, and contemporary art masterpieces and read short stories about them seven days a week. Join this community of over 1 million art lovers for whom daily art is something that enlightens their daily life. So there are more than 2,500 um, art pieces or masterpieces on there. And you can look at artist biographies and information about the type of artwork that you're viewing. So um, I really like this very much. You could just, just yeah you know, expand your world of view and um, your knowledge um, of art through this app. So really interesting. <clears throat> Last but not least is, you know, TED, uh, Feed Your Curiosity. So this app, um, you may have heard of TED Talks, um, give you personalized recommendations that match your unique interests or browse TED's library of thousands of inspiring, informative and transformational videos for free. Explore more than 3,000 TED Talks from remarkable people by topic or mood from tech and science to the surprises of your own psychology. So last week when we did our apps for cooking presentation, I found that TED Talk from this app um, regarding that um, remarkable woman and her kids and learning how to cook for them. So um, please check it out. It's a really cool app. <clears throat> Next up, we talked about the podcast app. So again, an app provided by Apple, you can discover podcasts that entertain, inform, and inspire. You can explore shows exploring a variety of topics, including, but not limited to, entertainment, comedy, news, and sports. So again, everything is pretty much free. And uh, depending on what you like, you know, you can, again, um, hear, you know, do things 
audio by audio, not by visual. Um, so that way, you know, you can give your eyes a rest sometimes versus just like watching the show. And um, there are, again, many, many different topics um, that you can, you know, listen to. I like the nutrition topics, definitely the true crime stuff that's on there. And um, some, of course, the food stuff. So <clears throat> your favorite celebrity may have a, a podcast on this app and you can listen to what they have to say about a certain topic. So again, the Apple podcast app is there for you. Next up, we're going to be talking about WikiHow, learn how to do anything. The WikiHow app gives you over 150,000 how-to guides right in the palm of your hand. Read or watch step-by-step -step instructions on every imaginable topic. Become the DIY, do-it-yourself, master of anything. Um, you can bookmark articles to read and use later, read featured articles of the day, and browse random guides for your entertainment. So if you need to look up how to do blank, then this is the app that you can search, you know, use it to search for that certain guide and um, get things that may be of use to you in your life. So um, I really recommend this app, very cool. Next up is the Refined app, Get Smarter Every Day. This app chooses five hand-picked links from the around the world that make you smarter and is tailored to your interests. There are new articles every day. Um, this app actually learns. The more you interact, the better your picks or links will become. You can customize your interests. And there are over 200,000 lifelong learners that start their day with Refined. So um, really cool articles, um, things that I may have not to, you know, search of myself that just are in the app for you to read. And, um, you know, knowledge is power. So um, I would recommend this app if you want to learn more about things that you're interested in. Um, we also covered, um, this was the apps for spring presentation, by the way. <clears throat> um, it's the New York Times crossword, um, where there are different games like Wordle, Sudoku, and more. Keep your mind sharp with word, number, and logic puzzles with the New York Times crossword app. Um, there are games like the crossword, which is, you know, a classic word game, as you all know. And there's also a mini crossword where there's simple clues. Um, there's Wordle. See if you can guess the five-letter word in six tries or less. So this is really popular on, you know, being shared to Facebook. So if you ever see Wordle in a Facebook post, we're talking about this game where um, it's kind of like lingo, kind of like that game show from the early 2000s. I'm not sure if any of you saw lingo, but that, I really liked that show um, growing up. And last but not least, there's Sudoku and more. So different games that just stimulate your brain and uh, signal a new change. Um, next up, we actually talked about apps for Earth. So the first one we talked about was the um, World Wildlife Fund Together app, learn about amazing animals. This app brings you closer to amazing and endangered species than you could ever imagine, letting you discover their lives and the work the World Wildlife Fund does for them. There are in-depth interactive stories of endangered animals, and there are multiple interactive elements. So you get to learn everything about different endangered species. And it's really easy to navigate. You just swipe um, basically throughout the app to wherever you wanna to go to, and uh, the wealth of information is there. Next up is Earth Hero, our future to choose. This app makes acting on climate change easy and helps you take positive, practical action in response to the climate emergency while discovering more satisfying ways to live. Um, you can take climate action collectively, choose from personalized actions, and discover ideas for healthy and smart ways to live. So um, you can keep yourself accountable to making sure our planet is, you know, at least better than it was you know beforehand so you can make actions for yourself or a to-do list for yourself um to again make the planet better so it's again really cool they also give you different articles different information so it's always good to learn more last but not least from this set was all the world so it is a safe and free live action show featuring inspiring and fun videos that Further socioeconomic growth explain how the world works and challenges us to explore. So um, this app is meant for kids. So if you have grandkids, this is a great app to expose them to. But 
you know, as we saw in the video that we watched together, it was um, informative for ourselves too on, again, how to better our planet. So um, there's a full library of episodes, variety of experiments and craft projects, and it's very easy navigation and no ads. Really cool. And it's free. So again, if you have grandkids that um, would be around, then hey, this is a great way to teach them about recycling, reusing, more about the planet and uh, nature around us. So it's quite interesting. Next up, we talked about the Wikipedia app, the free encyclopedia. You can explore your world, find a quick fact, or dive down a Wikipedia rabbit hole with the iOS app. There are 40 million articles across nearly 300 languages. So there's always more information to learn. Um, there's an explore feed where you can discover the depths of Wikipedia through recommended random and top articles. You can uh, find and search. You can easily find what you're looking for by searching within articles. And this app was launched, or the Wikipedia um, in general was launched in January 2001 by co-founders Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger. After that, we talked about two news apps, the first of uh, them being Apple News, news and magazines. Um, Apple News introduces you to the world's best journalism, trusted sources, curated by editors and personalized by you. Um, an Apple News Plus subscription, which is $9.99 a month, allows you to access magazines and premium newspapers. Some features include top stories and local news, in-depth sports, sports coverage, and articles from your favorite publishers, such as the Washington Post, NBC News, USA Today, and et cetera. So um, <clears throat> again, this is an app provided to you by Apple. Um, you don't need a subscription for certain articles, but for some you do. There's always a free alternative, but when I did have Apple News Plus, I found all the or articles quite uh, interesting. So it's up to you. The free alternative that I found most useful was Google News, top news stories. This app is a personalized news collector that organizes and showcases what's happening in the world so you can discover more about the stories that matter to you. With this app, you'll find local news and articles for you, worldwide headlines, and a categorized newsstand for um, certain publications that you like. So you do need a Google account, very easy to make one. But other than that, everything is free with this app. So I use it quite a bit, um, you know, on my phone when I'm looking at the news in the morning. So I quite it like a bit. But Apple News, they also send, you know, both of these apps send you notifications. So you always be aware of the most hottest things that are going on in the world. After that, we also talked about apps for art which I found really interesting. The first one is called Art Nows, which is a art news app. Um, curated from the web's best sources, this app collects the latest news about art artists, galleries, and museums. Some features include um, viewing news based on category, saving articles to read later, and you can also share articles with your friends and family. So if you are a very art person, this is the app for you, because again, you can learn about what's going on in the art world and based on um, location, um, which is, I think is pretty cool. Next, we talked about art set for the most realistic art tools where you can express your artistic side without having to take out an actual easel or art supplies. This app turns your iPad into a digital canvas where you can use different drawing tools to create a masterpiece. Um, some of their features include hyperreal tools such as oil, watercolor, pencil, marker, wax crayon, and more, in-depth user guide in the app, complete with video, and you can also import your own photos and videos as a base to create your own artwork. So don't feel like taking out colored pencils or markers, you can just use the Art Set 4 app and, um, you know, create a way. So um, really interesting. And it's all free. There is a premium side for uh, additional tools and such, but starting out and what I would recommend for most is just to keep it free. <laughs> Last up from the set was Zen Color. Color by number to relax. The world's first coloring game inspired by Zen and is dedicated to bringing you the best calming experience. Enjoy a relaxing, serene, and peaceful expedition with Zen Color. Some features include there's a 
large selection of exquisite paintings. There's even easy navigation between them. And the background music is quite calming and immersing yourself in nature's beauty and tranquility. So I know some of you really like this. So I wanted to make sure to showcase it to you guys again, because it's really important, especially because it's still Mental Health Awareness Month to be able to take care of yourself in many different ways. So um, I would implore you to try this out and see how it is. Um, next, I'll be talking about um, relaxing games for you. Um, this first one, Jigsaw HD, where there's 10,000 free Jigsaw puzzles in the app and new puzzles every day. You can complete puzzles to relax and get rid of stress. Um, you can upload your own pictures and use them to create puzzles. You can configure puzzles like the amount of pieces and such. And there are different categories of puzzles available to you. So on the image on the left hand side, that is an example of a um, let's see, four, four, 20 piece puzzle. And it looks quite good, right? <laughs> so um, definitely um, implore you to try that out. Next up is Wordscapes, um, a relaxing word puzzle game. You can enjoy modern word puzzles with the best uh, word searching, anagrams, and crosswords. Playing Wordscapes at least 10 minutes a day will sharpen your mind and relax your brain. So this is one of the apps that are preloaded onto your device. There are over 6,000 puzzles, a beautiful scenery backgrounds, and unlimited tries. So try that out. Last but not least is Zen Match. So kind of like Zen Color, but just a matching game, um, which mixed with Mahjong. So you can challenge yourself with this Mahjong inspired game where your goal is to match three tiles and clear the board. Match tiles, clear the board, decorate your own relaxing room, and find your piece in Zen Match. So again, calming music, um, just really good to you know keep your mind off things and uh, and relax. So. Great app. So um, I, I made sure to, um, to put aside some time today. So in case you, any of you wanted me to go more in depth about any of the apps that we covered today, um, that is why we have this time um, for you to ask me any questions and um, just to answer some of the questions that I have. But that was a general overview um, of um, a lot of the apps that we've covered in the past few months, and uh, it's been a great journey with you guys. Uh, tomorrow actually marks uh, one year since I've um, been working at WildTech, so I thought this would be a good starting point to, you know, just have some more new apps and such um, that we're going to cover. So um, I really um, always enjoy doing these advanced training. And we enjoy guys. you too, Alex. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. And uh, I was late coming on. I, I thought the day was Thursday. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay, Wanda. So, um, so yeah, I just want to do that day. review for you guys. Get some um, ideas from you if you guys have mm -hmm. any, and um, just learning more. So, um, today we will be um, uh, answering one of these questions. So, please, if you have a question, I'd appreciate um, you answering one of these questions for me. I want to hear from as many of you as you can um, just so that way you know we can have a great discussion and again this is the time where I, you know where I can answer questions about anything regarding the iPad or the apps um, that we covered today so the first question is what is one new fact that you learned today two what app or apps are you interested in trying out if you already haven't done so um, what do you like most about Apple products and last but not least, how has your iPad positively impacted your life? So I'll, I just wanna add one more question. If you guys have tried any of these apps, what is your favorite app that we've discussed? Um, I'd really uh, love to hear that. So I know what um, you're, you guys are interested in, but again, um, you know, I'd love to answer or I wanna hear from everybody um, for these questions. So uh, first up, Today is uh, Anne. Hi, Anne. How are you? I'm doing better, Alex. Um, I like the um, apps uh, that you did with the dot, the Zen color. It relaxes me, and I, I kind of like the and the word game. Uh, I, it took me a while to get used to, uh, to follow it, but I finally got the hang of it. <laughs> great, and, great. 
I, I like the uh, going to the art uh, museum, um, the daily art. That that that's fascinating, and um, I've shared that with my cousin, who's an artist. So we've uh, been doing that daily together. So, oh, um, that's yeah, so cool. Love yeah, it. yeah. So I just want I, I I really appreciate you, and and I, I I wanted you to know that I do appreciate you to the utmost. And you have a God-blessed day and hope God continues to bless you. Oh, I uh, appreciate that, and I wouldn't be here without you guys. So um, I really appreciate the feedback and all the great questions that you guys have. You know, I learned so much from you all. And uh, this is a, you know, two-way street. You know, we're both benefiting in multiple ways. So that's what I really like and uh, how you guys um, had me grow um, these past few months. I've really appreciated that. So. Thank you, Ann. Well, Wild Tech is, uh, is lucky to have you, and I hope they realize it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And let me know if you need anything else, okay? Okay, honey. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next up is uh, Gracie. Hi, Gracie. How are you? Alex, um, I, I, I love the Zen <laughs> color by numbers. You know, I was telling you about that. So I finally got into that. And I've completed four pictures so far. Oh, and I great. also like mahjong, so that Zen uh, match, you know, with that that that's something I'm always doing too. But what I wanted to ask you, and I thank you for you know you teaching us, and I've learned so much just being in the classes, and I've come a long ways with the iPad, you know. And yes. But I want the wiki how I used to mm -hmm. sew, and I've lost a lot of my talents for that. Will it have instructions? You know, it says some of them take you step by step. Will it go that far to give me like step by step help in um, maybe re uh, regaining some of my talents I lost in sewing? Oh yes, Gracie, great question. So yeah, I don't mind showing it to you. So um, okay. it, it really it really does step by step. There are a lot of you know different features available, but it's mm -hmm. quite easy to access. So again, this is a picture or this is my iPad with all of the apps that we've gone over. So 33 mm -hmm. apps all together. So mm -hmm. again, I really got to congratulate you guys. There's streaming, there's um, different types of developers, there's news, there's art, there's, mm -hmm. you know, for your environment, things of that nature. So it's uh, just great to have a variety of things to learn and uh, be able to talk about with your friends and family. So I really got to congratulate you guys on a you know, knowing and experiencing these different apps. But look, this is the Wiki um, How app. So it's very simple. There's a menu bar at the top left where you can either, look, there's a survival kit section mm -hmm. where you can look at mm -hmm. different things regarding survival, like self-defense, um, escapes, things of that nature, natural disasters that will become really relevant in the next, you know, 20, mm -hmm. 30, 40 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, always good to know. But yeah, different articles. And then there's a search bar right here at the top right. So you can literally search for anything. So how to, if you wanna go really basic, how to sew. Okay. Look, so 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 a shirt, so a scrunchie, so sleeves, so silk, so a suit. <laughs> okay, good. So look, good. sewing a zipper, like, you know, I, I even, you know, my, if I need help with sewing, I ask my friend, but sometimes I wanna learn how to use a needle. So yeah. if I were inclined, I would, you know, read about this. So mm -hmm. in general, I would start off with just how to sew. So look, it says how to sew. Sewing is not a useful skill, but a great and fun way um, to pass the time. There are tons of things you can do with a needle and thread, and all you need are a few basic skills and some imagination. So look, things that you know, um, most of the time they have little gifts or animated images for you to show you how to do it. So look, first up, okay. throw, thread your sewing needle and tie the ends of the thread together. So look, literally you can follow along with, okay. with and, and do the same thing that you can do. So once you're done with that step, look, you can actually slide it done as a okay. reminder and as a tracker for yourself, which is cool. But they also have little tips um, for that um, step as well. So same thing, look, pierce the needle through the side of the fabric, people won't okay. see. So cool. I, I, you know, I, I never realized that sewing. So you, you got to sew, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, through the side that people won't see. So um, right. again, really cool. You keep going through the steps. Most of them, again, have videos or gifts that are available to you. 
And look, awesome. there's actually, you know, um, different methods. So the first yeah. one was a straight mm. stitch, and these are other stitches, basic stitches mm -hmm. for beginners. So this is called a basting stitch. Hey, I don't okay. know what that is. So, <laughs> um, so look, fold it's, a piece a, of fabric to stitch. create two folds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just like the, you know, the mm -hmm. animated image that you see, that's cool. I didn't know that was called a basting stitch. So you see okay. how you can look. learn the information that I'll also use this see. One the different mm -hmm. method. Um, when you keep going at the bottom, they just give you additional mm -hmm. tips. So look, cotton, linen, and flannel are great beginner fabrics to work with because they're easy to hold, bend, and pierce a needle through. So different tips, um, mm -hmm. what you'll need. And look, related um, related articles. So if you want to, uh, you know, man. look, it says how to sew a button. So you can start with sewing and then you okay. can learn with the button. So look, mm -hmm. same thing, image, animated image, this is cool because I, I know I know sometimes yeah, I'm I, need gonna a, use I need that. a button. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, literally how to okay. do anything. How Thank to, you. No problem. How to um, look? How, how to do crunches? Um, <laughs> there's how to be cute. Oh my god. There's, see, there's literally anything. So how to anything? How to um, how to install a light bulb or how to install look. Um, Install a, a modem. Mm -hmm. Teaches you how to install a modem for your home. How okay. to, how to whatever. So literally anything that you'd like. And when I go back to this menu button, look. If I just want to look at a random article, just look. How to paint vinyl shutters. That's cool. Uh, Hit random again. How to perform well in a debate. Hey, if you mm -hmm. need, to, you know, if you need to do that, cool. That's and when you, whenever you're in an article, look, you can either bookmark the article for later. So if I hit bookmark, you see there's a little check mark next to bookmark. And if I go into the menu, there's the bookmarks section where I can view all of my bookmark articles. And at the bottom right, there's a share button. So you can actually share the article through mail, through iMessage, you can copy the link. So you can actually send it to others as well, especially if you benefited from it. So um mm. that's that's the wiki how app in a very easy thank sense thank you i'm gonna use that when i know great great anything mm -hmm. else gracie that's it thank you so much oh no problem let me know if you need anything else i'm ready <laughs> um next up is uh, brenda hi brenda how are you hey alex uh great great presentation um, I, I use a lot of these apps right now. <laughs> I've been doing this Zen color since you introduced it to us a while back. I've got like, I got like 38 pictures. I've already done. Oh my it's, goodness. It's addictive, Alex. That is so relaxing. So I, I really, I really like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, I've done, I like the Google news because I'm trying to keep up with with these crazy congressmen to see if they can <laughs> raise the ceiling that you know stop but they're gonna put know, the fair debt right huh i said in case they put the country in debt oh. yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> right 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 try to try to you know make the seniors you know pay for this it's a mess it's i've been looking at that I also did the Eat Okra and the Daily Art uh, uh, app as well. Yes. So a lot of these are these are great great uh, uh, apps, and I, but I really love the Zen Color because I've even got <laughs> my granddaughter doing it. She got a little picture she's doing with a little girl and a little doggy. And so. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, they're they're good. I, I really like it. And you know what? I've never had an Apple product. I've always had Androids. And, you know, I, I really, I've come to like it quite a bit. So, you know, I, I, I use my iPad every day and I'm coloring every day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I really enjoy these apps. So, and I'm going to look at, look at that wiki how, does that, does that wiki how tell you how to be humble and appreciative? <laughs> hey, it, it, yes. it should Look, look, if, it, it, if there's how to be cute, there's how to be, how to be appreciative. And, you know, yeah. it's, it, you know, you might see, look, uh, how, yeah. So let's try 
how to be humble. Yeah, there you go. Be humble. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but you know, oh. something, you know, you know, for even even those, you know, basic things oh, yeah, that may it. seem like it's nothing to it, you know, it, it it is because, you know, what I've learned in life is that, you know, if, if you you got to be humble and you know certain you things know. just to be able to interact with others and yes, you right. know how, and, and learn about how others you know that that empathy and that compassion for others as well. So yes. you know mm-hmm. sometimes you may need you know just a reminder for yourself and you know but you know for for me like I'm always you know grateful and appreciative of everything that I have. But you know yes, sometimes when right. you may be going through a negative situation or you know some things sometimes when you're uncomfortable it's you know it's really still important to have those um, ideals in mind yeah um, you know so things like that you know it may be silly but you know it's it's real like I, you know, I don't think like, it's silly I think it's great I mean it's look, like, just like accepting put the yeah, shoe on accepting the other your foot limitations it, yes yeah. Putting, you're putting your shoe in the other feet so you can right. you know apologize for your mistakes be open to receiving feedback um, exactly. you know it's someone it's else might be right and these are things that you know you know not to go off on a tangent but we're all still learning no matter what you know what age you are or how old you are or what you've experienced there's always you know just being able to learn more and uh you know, evolve as a person is really important. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah. I really, I really, really like this app. There's yes. nothing too silly for it. <laughs> no. One more thing, Alex. Happy one year anniversary. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brenda. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're um, is there any, yes. Is there any other app that um, you saw that you would like to try, Brenda? Um. Well, I'll probably try that art set for We've got, I wrote down all these apps. There's a bunch of them. We, we got a bunch. I think I'll do the eat, eat okra, eat okra, uh, um, you know, whenever we're out and, you know, yeah. tell us what business, you know, we could probably go to. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But yes, yes. It's, it's some great apps. It really is. Yep, awesome. really is. Quite a <laughs> well, few. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda. I appreciate your uh, sure, feedback so you're much. Sure, you're welcome. Let me know if you need anything else. Okay, I will. Yeah. Um, next up is uh, Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. How are you? Oh, I'm delighted. And these have been wonderful, um, Alex. I would say if you were to, you have so many on your iPad, um, do, do you have any storage space left after? Oh, yeah, yes. oh, yes. There's, I have, you know, I, I personally myself um, pay for a, a 250 gigabyte iCloud plus thing where, you know, that storage, but no, like the, most of these apps, they're pretty small in size. Um, I know that because again, when you download that, you know, each app, it takes a certain amount of time. So a bigger app takes longer, um, a, a smaller app, you know, it takes shorter. So all of these are, again, pretty much um, very small, but if we okay. if, again, just just to make sure, if you want to ever look at your storage, you go to settings uh-huh. um, on the left hand hot on the left hand side, you hit general, and then on yes. the right hand side, you look up iPad storage. Uh-huh. So again, as you can see, I haven't even used the amount of storage that's provided just through the iPad. As you can see, I've only used forty gigabytes um out of the 64 that's on that's provided to you guys so well that's um, amazing so as you can see like most of these apps um you know they're very small um there's only one that's about a gig i don't even play that game anymore so i'm probably gonna um delete it but as you can see most of these apps um are, are very small so you can have tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff well that's encouraging um, but look, this is how you can check yourself and see yes. how much storage you have and um, if you would like to delete anything. But me personally, no, because I may never know if I need to use it or if I want to explore something Absolutely. again. So that's why I know most of the time I keep it. But if I was pressed for storage, like I was in like 2017, 2018 with my with my uh, the iPhone, I had the time I had relatively small storage. But, I, you know, when I get you know have this amount of storage available which is again provided to all of you which i think is really great then you know the storage really does not become an issue for most okay so, well i'm yeah, going just, to be i'm going to be a little uh, you know more confident when i download apps because 
I have an Android phone and I was having an issue with storage. So I just, I translated that fear to my iPad, uh, mm. you know, so I've been reluctant to download, but it, I would like Wikipedia, which, um, which I believe is free, is it not? Yes, mm -hmm. every, all the apps that we covered are free. Everything, Everything is free. Everything okay. is free. It, now it can my, be a, mm -hmm. my daughter yesterday was asking me how to create a folder. She recently retired. She wanted to put everything pertaining to her retirement in a folder. I, I was telling her to right click on email pertaining to that folder and uh, she'd get a drop down menu and then she could um, create uh, folders for certain topics. But from now on, I'm going to tell her to download WikiHow. Yes, yes, that's that's a good that's a good segue because again you can mm -hmm. they, they have those articles that are I'm available done. for things like that um, because yes each system depending on what you want to do because you had just mentioned email um, she there could be a, you know she could organize it if she has like a computer like by the files or if she has a device you know like an iPad for example there's the files app so yes there's there's a you know for each system or device unfortunately there will be nuances in doing certain things so. Yes, yeah, just being able to just search and find out, you know, how to do things in specific and at least have a baseline of where to start is, Absolutely. You know, is a good idea. So. And congratulations. You have certainly been um, an asset to the iPad program. And I love the way you and Teresa work so uh, wonderfully and warmly, but professionally together. So <laughs> I appreciate that and good luck going forward. God bless. Oh, oh, thank you. That that uh, always warms my heart. And yes, Teresa, she's the one that uh, actually encouraged me from the start to you know start off with the modules. I remember um, way back in September, but the first module I did, I think it was module two, but I was you know scared out of my butt. But <laughs> <laughs> it didn't but show. You know, <laughs> but it's um, yes, I'm really grateful to again always have the opportunity because. You know, um, there, it, it, it takes a certain person. So, you know, I, you know, have been in customer service all my life since, uh, um, you know, since I was 17. So um, it's, uh, been, it's been a ride uh, meeting different people and uh, exploring different cultures. That's what it's all about. You got to um, yeah. just Alex, keep your I'm mind open. I'm going to jump off because I know someone else has questions, but I appreciate the programming that you do for Thurs Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. It was wonderful to talk to the office of the DC Attorney General. And I, I uh, Mr. Uh, Martinez, who was on yesterday, um, he was great, but I'd like to have the Attorney General himself on at some point. I met him when he was running for that office. His name is Brian Schwab, S-W-A-L-B. And he's a wonderful new uh, incoming Attorney General. So I, I wanted to mention that to uh, the young man who was presenting yesterday, that at some point I'd like to meet the attorney general himself. I'd like for our class to meet him. I met him when he was campaigning for the office mm -hmm. and he's a delightful uh, man. And um, I think he's going to make a difference. And he's got some big shoes to fill coming in behind Carl Racine, our outgoing attorney general. Oh wow! Well, thank you so much for that feedback. We we had him um, last year um, in October. I remember. Um, so I remember uh, listening to his um, to his tips and tricks. Very interesting. So um, yes, it's that's a good idea. So we'll uh, definitely keep that in mind, Yvonne. And uh, thank you so much for your information. You're you're a, a wealth of knowledge, and uh, it's thank always so nice to hear from you, Yvonne. So thank, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Just let me know if you need anything else. Thank you so much. No problem. Next up is Miss Deborah Edge. Hi, Deborah. Go ahead and unmute. Hello, Alex. And uh, ditto to what the ladies have said about your warmth and professionalism. And it encourages us to get on. You know, sometimes you interact with folks and it's like they don't see you, they're not hearing you, but you're listening, you're responding. And I've learned so much. I'm kind of hit and miss with our meetups, but when I get on like today, you should have seen me uh, taking screenshots of everything that I <laughs> want to try. I usually use the reminder and the calendar because being a yes. retired, 
uh, you know, it, sometimes they just merge together. <laughs> and so it's a good way of keeping me accountable for things that I'm trying to do. I love art, so I haven't tried that one yet. And I'm not really a puzzle doer, but now that it's in a format that I can like, what am I going to do with this puzzle once I finish it? Or I'm not going to mess with all these pieces all over the house. This is a wonderful <laughs> format to try my luck with some puzzles. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yes, Deborah. And uh, I, I enjoy it myself too. So um, I, I can actually just showcase it really quick. I just completed a, a puzzle myself recently, but yes, it's so easy. Um, the music is great. Um, it's really easy to access. As you can see, um, there are different puzzles. There's a daily puzzle that you can do. Um, it's really easy to pick what amount of pieces. So look, 12 versus 42. I'm change. not going. I'm um, not going to admit to how many pieces I will start with, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but look, there's even different types of shapes. So this oh, wow. shape, the square is easy. The regular puzzle piece is a little harder, and the curved ones are the hardest. But yeah, once you start playing, um, there are ads, but very easy to yeah. get rid yeah. of them. Just hit the X, and, and look, I, you can I start am... your own puzzle. Right. And look, Looks you can. Great. You, you oh can look! Put wow, all the puzzles together. You can and put so all the vivid. On the, floor. The, co the colors are so vivid. Oh yes. So look, they uh, it automatically puts in the piece for you if it's in the right spot. So look, this one's really simple. Um, just make sure you put it in the right place. You yeah. see, I'm just using my finger to go through different pieces. So look at this. We're completing the puzzle. And look, the puzzle is done. And after you complete the puzzle, I think the greatest thing is, is look, if you look at the, um, if you look at the bottom, <laughs> you can uh, submit a review if you'd like, but if you look at the bottom, you can actually um, go in depth on it. So you can actually um, just have the picture by itself. You can share it on Facebook if you'd like, but also if you hit, see that share button right there at the bottom right, you yes. can actually tap on it and save the image. So if I hit save image and go to my photos app. And there it is. Look, it's right here in my photo. So if I want to use the background or if I wanted to put it as my wallpaper or send it to somebody, I sure could. So really interesting, right? Right. And the other one uh, that I really love is WikiHow because I'm an armchair Jeopardy player. And my oh. mom used to always say, oh, you can go on Jeopardy. I said, do you think I could handle the lights and the buzzers? I don't think so. But I love information, you know, trivia information, history, you name it. And that's a yes, great source to verify and get details on things. And oh, also you told me and told the class about the Apple News. I avoided that because I thought I had to pay, but I'm using the free segment of it. Yes, yes, that's that's the, that's the same way I do. I don't I don't have an Apple News Plus, but I just go through the articles that I can access, and then um, you know the the headlines is usually enough for me most of the time because they send you notifications. So yeah. uh, it's 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 pretty cool. So um, and finally, yes. you asked about what we liked about the iPad with all Apple products. I'm very visually focused. It's mm -hmm. visually easier to me to navigate through Apple products. And I love the iPad because of its convenience and the fact that it's visually friendly. Oh, yes. Just like um, we talked about in the history, the first Mac computer, it had a graphical user interface or a GUI that, you know, before that, computers were all text based. So you had to type in something in order for you to do an action. The Mac said, hey, we're going to have everything visual. Again, just like this, where you can um, look at the different icons, look at the you know different parts of the screen, and you'll know what to do just based on looking at that. So I think that's again quite interesting, and um, it's very fast, very sleek, um, very easy once you get the hang of it. Just to move around either on the phone, on the iPad, on the computer. So I totally agree with you on that. Thank you, Alex. Happy anniversary. Oh, I appreciate you, Deborah. You have a wonderful day. Let me know if you need anything else. All righty. <laughs> um, Alex. Next
Um, next up, um, again, Sarah, I'm just going based on the hands first. If you'd like to say something, please raise your hand and uh, I'd appreciate that. Next up is Miss Mary Thomas. Go ahead and unmute Mary. So go ahead and hit unmute in the middle. <clears throat> Can you try again, Miss Mary? Make sure you hit unmute in the middle. Okay, just um, let us know if you if you get it. Okay, just there you go, Miss Mary. Okay, can you hear me, Alex? Yes. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine now. Um, what I like about the iPad is. I learned how to do things I didn't know how to do. And then I started messing around with, with different um, uh, apps and see what was in them. Then I ran across this one that, where you put your medicine and stuff in. So I started putting all my medicine in there. And now I'm trying yes. to find out how to set the time so it makes some kind of noise let me know it's time to take it. And then I don't, I'm home by myself a whole lot of time. So I, it's my company, my, my best friend right mm -hmm. now. Yes, and, uh, yes, I saw the mess around with stuff. Then sometimes I forget how to get into it. Then I mess around and get into it. Then I said, How in the world I get into this? And then, like, <laughs> you were doing the pictures, I did the pictures on the on the um, um, Facebook, and I was trying to put the pictures on my iPad. I got to keep working on that one to get it together. And so then I tried to get the games, and the only game I got on there was um. Uh, Oh, what is that that going thing? Um, <laughs> I forgot the name of it now. It never ran across my mind now. No, it's a number game. It's a card game, and I was trying to get concentration and all that different stuff on there so I can have it. But that one game just keep coming up, so I just keep on playing that one game. I said, when I get tired, I'm gonna know how to work it after a while. And oh, happy yes. to touch me to you too, my uh, Alex. Oh, I, uh, thank I, you. I got to go, y'all. I really do appreciate you. I got to get up to the yeah. library and see you one day. Oh, yes, that would be so much fun. And, uh, um, you know, just because I, you know, I see you every time. I'm, I'm glad you're at home and, you know, a lot, you know, and well. So it's, it's nice yeah. to see you, in, okay, uh, you, you know, take, in your place. Okay, and you take care. And, I, and God bless all of y'all. And keep up the uh, good Thank you so much, Miss Murray. You have a wonderful day. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Um, next up is Miss Sandra. Hi, Sandra. How are you? How you doing? Uh, good, good, good. I just, I just responded to your question in the, in your, the direct message. Okay. So, uh, go check that out. But, um, yes. Would you like to answer one of these questions? Um, no, I wanted to ask a question. Where did you, you say that, did you say that we can get, um, one of the art things and draw on the iPad? Yes, it's called um, Art Set 4. So um, it's this app right here. Uh, again, if you search Art Set 4 on the iPad, you can um, download it. And it's literally a canvas for you. So I'm opening it right now. This is the one that we created okay. beforehand. But, um, but yeah, you can um, start your own art piece. You can upload um, a picture. So this, this picture right here that I did, I, this was a picture of the sky. So I was able to then edit it with um, you know, with different gestures and such, but you can start mm -hmm. playing um, with the new canvas, and you see all the different drawing tools um, that are available. So again, if I uh, um, choose a different color, you can then you see this different tool. If I go to this tool, you see it's thinner, so mm -hmm. more detail. Um, this is. Uh, it says oil pastel, so you'd see all the different textures, and you can choose all the different colors um, based on what you'd like. So look, even you can even change the the paper that you're drawing on. So look, a gray background or a red background, or a grid background. That's pretty cool. Again, change the color. So you can. I'm literally just using my finger to draw. Mm -hmm. And I can change, um, again, the type of utensil that I'm using. If you tap on a certain utensil, um, again, you can then 
Again, look at the different brushes, the different blend, with all the different types of things that you are able to. You can also, you know, again, adjust the color, eraser, all of those different types of things. So, um, so yeah, you can turn your, instead of taking out any art supplies or an easel or anything, you can just simply draw um, using your finger on your iPad or right. upload a picture of your own. Yes, <laughs> I like mm -hmm. that. I'd like to do art. Awesome. Anything else, Sandra, for today? No, that's, that's about it, but congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Sandra. I, I uh, remember you from when I first started, so it's uh, just been nice to see you this uh, whole time and uh, stay on and learning more. It always yeah. makes me happy, so thank you so always, much. Man. Always. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is um, Miss Janice Taylor. Hi, Janice. How are you? Go ahead and unmute. Hi. Good. Uh, happy anniversary. I am going to. How do I get the background? That's what I'm trying to get the background. Pictures in the background. Um. Are you talking about in Zoom, ma'am? Yes. You know how everybody got. You got the pictures in the back. Yes, ma'am. So um, that's usually covered in um, module six, where we talk about Zoom and how to do that. But essentially, you need a picture on your iPad. So um, if you already have a picture on your iPad, you um, go into Zoom, you hit more and then background and effects. So it's, it's very simple. Um, once you have an image um, um, in your photo gallery. So again, if I go to Zoom, you tap on more and then you hit backgrounds and effects, you can then um, add as many backgrounds as you want or edit okay. your pictures or um, change it just by hitting this plus button. So you gotta make sure that all, you know, you allow access to your photos, but once you have them, you see these are all the photos that are in my iPad um, mm -hmm. and then I can adjust it based on what I'd like. So this was actually a uh, puzzle from the Jigsaw Puzzle app. And then this was from the uh, Zen Color app that um, we went over. So um, you can add as many or as little pictures as you like to use as your virtual background. But that's also covered in module six, OK? All right, thank you very much. No problem, Ms. Janice. It's nice to see you on. And, uh, and hopefully you'll be on for another year of learning about different Yes, apps. I will be on. <laughs> I was on last year, so I just come back to renew. Oh, yes, I remember now. Yes, it's a, always a pleasure. And I hope you have uh, seen and experienced the uh, evolution of our program. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, next up is Diane. Go ahead and unmute, Diane. Hi, Alex. And congratulations. Hello. Uh, what I wanted to know is how do I get a picture back? I was doing a uh, doing a picture, and somehow I lost it on my um, when you put in the numbers and put in the colors. I want to know how do I get that picture back. So, are you talking about like when you're inside of the app? You, yeah, you, the yes. Zen app. So when um, so what you're saying is when you go back to the app, you don't see it no more, like no. what you were working on. No. Okay. Okay, so if I go into the Zen Color app, um, when you when you open it up again, um, you should get back to the um, to the home screen. So when you're on the home screen, um, you see there are different um, tabs at the bottom. So the navigation bar, you want it, You want to make sure that you hit My Gallery. When you hit My Gallery, you see these are all the pictures that are in progress. So you should see excuse me, the one that you um, are working on. So these are the three that I worked on. And um, if you have any completed paintings, you'll appear in the completed section. So again, you go to the app, you hit the My Gallery option at the bottom right, and you can see all of the different, um, all the different paintings that you have started. Well, it's not like these pictures, it's, it's just the numbers. And I make the put hit the colors. That's the picture I can't get back. The number of pictures. 
Where, yeah, where so these help? these so these are the these are the number of pictures. So again, no, you see, no, no, no. I mean, the numbers. Period. There's no picture like like the a beetle or nothing like that. They just play numbers, and I put in the color, and and as long as I put in the color, the picture will come up. It's it's not an actual picture. It's just numbers. And oh. she talked about the mystery one, the one that yes. say mystery. Right, that's it. Yeah. Um, say that again, Brenda. It's, I'm it's, sorry, I'm a little. There, there's some some uh, artwork where it's a mystery. You don't know what the picture is, and then when you go to the numbers, it'll it'll pop up where you have to, you know, hit the the color. Oh, okay. I, yeah, there's um, some that call that are called mystery. <laughs> yeah. Mystery. I, oh, I yeah, see. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, yes. they are. Okay. Oh. Thank you. I I didn't explore that. So um, let me go in here and and see what's going on. Okay. So same thing. There, there's no, it, there's not a picture, but there are just numbers that are wow. on the screen. So again, you find the number that you want to start off with and you color, again, you, you zoom in and out by pinching with your fingers. You can um, tap on, again, all of those pieces regarding yes, that, that color. So as you can see, these are pretty, um, you know, pretty long. There's a lot of um, different- But, but I, I can't find the picture no more. That's what I wanna do is find the picture. I didn't Look at it, most it, of it. All that you started, she trying to find the picture she started. Yeah, so the let's. Mystery. So I, I go out of this. So you see now in in this mystery section the, at the top left, that is the image that we were just working on. If right. I hit my gallery at the bottom right, there you, you see go. now that yeah. picture is, mm -hmm. is okay. here. Okay, I got it. So, now. I got it. So mm -hmm. yes, again in my, the my gallery section, you can look at all of your paintings that are in progress, and you can look at all the paintings that you have completed a hundred percent. Okay, I so got it. I, yeah. Okay, I hope that helps. Yes, yes, that did help me a great deal. Yeah, anything anything else, um, Diane? Uh, yeah, can I ask you about the questions I wanted to ask you before about, about the spelling bee? Um, sure, sure, really quick. Well, well I got a minute. How, how did it, uh, what made you interested in the spelling bee and how did you get in the spelling bee? Oh, okay. Really quick. So in fifth grade, I had just transferred to my last half of fifth grade at uh, Key Elementary. Um, when I got there, they just, um, it just happened to be an activity. So um, I, I, I just did it. I didn't really prepare. And then I, you know, won um, at that point after winning, um, I go to the, um, I don't, I don't remember what level it was, but it was the second level. We had to go to some place. I don't remember. It was in like Northeast and it can be fair. So I went at that level. And then after that level, um, we would um, go to the, not national, but like right before that at NBC. So I, I had an invitation to their studios, you know, gift bag and all. And then um, we were literally sitting just like we were on, you know, TV. So right. I lasted like three words and then um, I misspelled, but um, the prizes were great. One of them were um, baseball tickets to RFK. So that was pretty cool and all the different memorabilia. And then in seventh grade, same thing. I competed at my school. Um, me and this other girl, we literally went like 14 words, like head to head. I did a word, she did a word. I, you know, all that back and forth until, um, until it was a standstill. So her and I actually both advanced um, again to that next level. Um, she went out on that round, but I um, managed to win that one. And then I went back to NBC again <laughs> in okay. seventh grade. And then I did like seven, eight words in. So more than half the folks were gone before I went out. And then same thing, there were prizes as well. So um, I didn't try to, you know, you know, experience it again, but if I had the opportunity to do, I would, but it was just cool learning, um, you know, about words. That's, that's, you know, how I learned how to spell these days. I was a really big reader back in uh, right, those years. Right, so right. Um, that helped me out in a lot of different ways. Right, I just want, I was just interested. Thank you so much for telling me. Oh yeah, no problem. That was, uh, that was definitely a highlight, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my fifth grade. I was like, hey, I was in, I was in the 
in the freaking national spelling bee. Like, that's so cool. So uh, yeah. when I seen that it was coming back again this year, that just uh, brought back nostalgia for me. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> All right, no problem. Um, I seen two hands that were up. I seen Janelle, and then I thought I saw Greer's hand. Would either of you like to answer one of these questions or uh, have anything to say? So Greer, uh, Janelle. Uh, this is Bridget. Um, okay, hi, Bridget. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I just wanted to say that learning under your tutelage has been a total pleasure. I've learned so much from you on this iPad and I've learned to explore a whole bunch of different apps I never even knew existed. So without your guidance, without your um, expertise and you're willing to try to actually go in, explore it yourself and find the answers to different people's questions, it's helped a lot. It has helped a lot. And um, I just say want to say that uh, it's been a pleasure um, having you uh, in our corner, teaching seniors how not to be bored, alone, um, or struggling with emotional or any kind of things by uh, going to different apps that give them pleasure. So I just say thank mm -hmm. you. Love you much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Bridget. And yes, this, you know, this, uh, again, this program started off with homebound seniors where COVID really, well, COVID really affected seniors in general, but, um, you know, this, this allowed them to communicate with, you know, their friends and family, allowed them to have, you know, activities, learn new information. So it checks up all those boxes in regards to like your emotional well-being and your mental health and such so you know it 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 helps me too and uh i, I love exploring things and that's that's how you learn you really learn by doing so just by going through each app seeing what it offers it's um you know it it allows you know me to better you know explain it for you guys and it's you know it's all about trial and error just trying it and you know just going from there because you know some of the topics you know i was really um, you know, engrossed in, you know, the app, but for some others, you know, I, it's something new. So, you know, you just got to take the learning by stride and, you know, appreciating maybe the hardships because they teach you more at the end of the day. So, um, so yes, it's try to do a whole bunch of different topics, different cultures, different viewpoints. It's so, um, you know, it's really important just to keep that brain going and, uh, you know, just, and as I always say, it's I really appreciate all of you for uh, being on this journey with me. And uh, you know, it's it's always a pleasure. You guys, you guys deserve the most. So that's why I do what I do. <laughs> so thank you, Bridget. I appreciate you. You're quite welcome. Anytime, Alex. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Hi, Ronald. How are you? I'm holding on, Alex. I just want to make it short and sweet. I just want to say thank you. Oh, no problem. It's uh, we we, we got to thank you for uh, being so entertaining on Mondays. I don't know what we do without you, Ronald. <laughs> oh. And um, I, I again again I really appreciate that. You know, you do your thing. Um, that allows you know me time to make sure that you know this program is still going, and we always invite new folks in because you never know who's gonna. Pop in the program and um, really give a lot of insight and information. So um, we appreciate you. I know all of us do, and uh, all of your knowledge about sports that I certainly lack. <laughs> sports ain't my strong suit, but we, we appreciate you. So um, we're so glad yes. you. We're glad you're part of the James gang with us. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> no problem. And uh, let me know if you need anything. I appreciate you. All right. Anybody else have a question or anything to say before we uh, start with Crystal for today? Hi, Alex, this is Lynette. Hi, Lynette, I, how I are you? I'm, in, I'm doing very well. I wanted to chime in what everybody else has said. You have been so excellent. We all love you dearly. You really shine with your customer service with us seniors who are challenged in many ways, technologically and other ways as well. But you have helped us all, and I just want to thank you very much and say that I and all of us love you. 
Oh, uh, right. th th thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda, Jeanette. Again, Brenda, that, stop, that means, Brenda, stop that means so I'm much. Start crying. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, th and thank you so much, Lynette, for your idea. I'll definitely um, keep that in consideration. So just uh, keep checking that daily email, okay, Lynette? All right. Thanks, Alex. Alex, can no I make one little point? I've already spoken, but I had this little tidbit about brain. By exercising your brain, you continually enhance the connective tissues that exist between your brain and its neutrons. This helps to mm -hmm. keep your brain fast and fit. Learn something new every day by challenging yes. your brain to learn more. And we thank you for being a part of that. Oh, oh, thank you, Deborah. That that literally, that literally is it. Just that's just, you know, how I operate too. You gotta always be looking for new information. And uh, no matter what topic it is, cooking, life, uh, money, all, all that stuff, it, it, it all relates to itself. Everything in the world relates to itself. So if you become an expert in one thing, you can easily become an expert in another thing. So I had my love for, uh, um, for music. You know, I played a flute and piccolo for 10 years, but in music, there's a, a bunch of math. So that's how I really love to learn math because you got to learn the beats. You got to learn how many um, notes are in a certain measure and such. So everything leads to another. So, you know, if you, if you know about games, you can go more in depth about games, like relaxing games, action games, things like that. Um, cooking, you can go into different cultures and, and first retrospect to their, you know, their food and such. So everything leads to another. So um, that's kind of how I operate and, you know, what I implore you guys to do, you know. So thank you so much, Deborah, for that. Happy to share. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Um, I got to go, but I'll talk to you soon. Oh, you too, Lynette. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful Bye. day. Anybody else have anything to say before we start with Crystal? I just wanted to say, Alex, that uh, um, congratulations on being with us. Please stay with us because we're going <laughs> to hang in there as long as you're there, okay? Oh, yes. I, I'm, and, I'm and, doing and, my best. And, you, you have really uh, got me going into things that I didn't think that I'd ever do on this thing. Because when I first looked at it, I said, oh, I can't do this. It's oh. not it's not, it's, it's not, a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with books, but this was just a bit much. So thank you again. Um, uh, I want to ditto on what everybody else said. We love you and we thank oh. you. And we hope that you love us as much as we love you. Oh, well, thank you. That, uh, again, it warms my heart. And uh, for the same thing for me too. Like I've, you know, had an iPhone since I was 14. When I got this iPad, you know, for, you know to, to be able to present for you guys and such, I thought, hey, I'm just gonna use it for that. But no, it really has, you know, become a part of my life as well. I can use it to watch videos, play games, learn information. Um, organize myself, um, you know, relax, share information with others, prepare, and look up information. So literally this one device has definitely made an impact on my life. So um, I hope it do, did the same for you guys as well. So um, I appreciate all of your feedback and uh, always looking forward to Wednesday mornings and uh, definitely looking uh, look forward to today and just to explore what we've accomplished. It's always good to give yourself a pat on the back, just to encourage yourself to do more. So um, thank you so much, you guys. Um, again, we have Crystal for today for the Lunch Club. And uh, at 1.30 p.m., we're gonna have our security features of your iPad presentation um, where we will have some door prizes available. So um, let's, uh, again, thank you so much for your time, everyone. Um, let's welcome Crystal um, as our guest for the Lunch Club today. So, thank you so much. Clear your screen. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Hi, Crystal. Hi. Hi, Crystal. <laughs> it's really hot outside today. What are you guys eating for lunch? What are you planning for you guys' lunch today? You say it's really hot? Yes, it's pretty warm outside, yes. Ain't no fun. Get out of here. That's um Crystal. She reads. Okay. She's very good. Yes. Oh, we I having two. 
We having tuna in our house. Tuna, okay. Tuna. Protein, okay. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, last week we left off um, with the essential of Dick Gregory, right? We left off on chapter, let's see, I believe it was little. Yeah, so I have good news. I was able to get the audio book so you guys can hear him read it as well, and not just me. Um, so we're going to start listening to the audio book uh, as well as today. And I'll keep the um, chapter, the book on the screen so you guys can read along as well, okay? Sounds good? Yep, sounds good. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Let's see if you're able to hear it. Lil, one Sunday, I looked in the audience and a girl walked up to me and said, Okay, just to check, you guys can hear that, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead. Would you come back to the table and give me your autograph? I I'd like you to meet my sisters. I said, yes. That's why it's always so nice to be polite to people. Be nice. Never put yourself above. Hello, what happened, Crystal? Wait, Crystal. Okay. She's muted. Hey, uh, Crystal? Yes, you guys can't hear it anymore? No, we couldn't hear anymore. It stopped. Okay, I'm going to go back. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I said yes. That's why it's always so nice to be polite to people. Be nice. Never put yourself above that audience. Because in walking to that table, I didn't know I was going to meet my wife. I walked over, and there was a little girl sitting there, very bashful and very excited, like God had walked over to the table. I asked them where they were from. Willard, Ohio, a small town. This was the first time they had ever been out to see big entertainment. We were big to people who had never been in a nightclub before. I sat down and asked her name. She said Lillian Smith. I asked her where she lived and she told me. And during the conversation, she told me she worked at the University of Chicago. I said, well, I, I'm over there every day running track. Let's have lunch one day. She said, oh, no, you don't mean it. And she kind of tucked her head like I was the big entertainer just saying something to be saying it. I said, I'll tell you what. You give me your phone number. And I'll call you, and I'll let you know exactly what day. She was so nervous, she could hardly write it. I rolled this little piece of paper up and put it in my pocket. This was an afternoon show on Sunday. And when I went up to do the next show, I couldn't believe how she looked at me. Like she was afraid that nobody in Willard, Ohio, would ever believe that she talked to this man. I thought it's... It's going to give me a great thrill to call her because she doesn't believe I'm going to call. This was the summer of 58. They had stayed for the first matinee, second and third show. When I was ready to leave, I walked past the table and I told him goodnight. I left with the girl I was dating at the time. I took her home and went back to where I was living with my friends, Ozell and William. I lay there that night and got to thinking about that faith. Then it dawned on me that would probably be the way my mother would look in a nightclub. She'd never been in one. She'd be excited. She'd run back home and say, Richard, 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 I spoke to the star of the show. I couldn't sleep that night because I visualized my mother coming back telling me that. Mom telling me I spoke to Harry Belafonte. I'd say, no, Mom. She'd say, yes, he's going to call me. Early Monday morning, I called. I called with the feeling that I know the expression she's going to have on her face would be the same expression mom would have on hers. I could hear her expression in her voice over the telephone. She was so excited. It was like I had called my mother. This girl had looked so out of place in that oh. nightclub, sitting there, knowing that out of everybody in that nightclub, I asked for her number. 
she would look so out of place in a nightclub. So I talked with her and told her I would call her back and we'd have lunch. She was so excited, it really made me feel just like I did when I was romping and stomping in my heyday. Nobody could stop me. Summer rolled around. I worked hard, worked very hard. Then I went into the hospital about August with yellow jaundice. And I never called Lillian anymore because I felt I wasn't good enough for her. The day I went to the hospital, I don't know, I called at her job because I wanted to let her know I was going to the hospital. It seemed that letting her know I was going was like letting my mother know. I called her, and you would never realize I hadn't talked to her in a month. The concern. Why hadn't you called? Just like an excited little kid, I said, I don't know if I'll stay, but here's my number at the house. You can call and find out. They kept me lying there in that hospital thinking about how hard I had worked, how I was going to miss being at work on the weekend. Then when my friends came and told me about the people that were at the club that weekend, how they missed me, how many of them were concerned, boy, that made me feel good. I never will forget that night. When the visitors left, I looked around and there was Lillian. Something about the way she walked in, because in the VA hospital, you can't bring anything up. She brought me Hershey bars, grapes, and I know she didn't slip them in. She came in, and I never had anybody in my life so concerned about me. When visiting hours were over, she asked if she could come back. I said, no, it's, it's so far over there. She seemed so hurt. I explained to her that it wasn't that. I said, yes, you can come. Bring me some books when you come back. She said, do you need anything? I said, oh, yeah, some cigarette money. Yeah, you lay in the hospital at night. I think that's what really made me do some real introspective thinking because I could gather myself. I could slow down for the first time and decide where I was going, where I was coming from. I lay there and thought about my college coach. And as I lay there in the hospital, for the first time in my life, I realized that I had found the one thing I was looking for, show business. I had decided that I was going to go all the way in this thing. I used to lie there and think and wait for visiting hours. It seemed like a coincidence that Lillian was always the last one to come by because most of the people I knew were show business people so they could get there without worrying to get off from work. She came by that night, and I was really impressed with the type of books and magazines and things she brought me. It was the magazines I had always wanted to help keep me on top of the news, but I wasn't able to afford Life, Time, Look, Newsweek, Saturday Evening Post, and Reader's Digest, and two cartons of cigarettes. I never had two cartons of cigarettes in my life. She opened up the drawer and put them in there, and she said, I'm going to leave some cigarette money for you, too. And I had asked her to bring me some small change for the telephone. So we talked for a while. I never could find anything to say to her. She was a quiet and shy person, so we never talked too long. I tell her good night and tell her to go home before it was too late. When I reached in the drawer to get a cigarette out, I remembered I had asked her to bring me some change for the telephone, but... Two rolls of quarters, paper money. I counted it, $100. I lay there and I couldn't believe this because this was about the same way mom would act. If mom would have ever had any money, if I would ask her for anything, she would overdo it and still feel like she hadn't done enough. I lay there and I couldn't believe this. I kind of had the feeling that all the hurt I thought I put mom through, maybe mom understood me better than I thought she did. Because the same thing this girl, Lillian, is doing for me would be the same thing my mother would do. I couldn't sleep that night for thinking about how mom never had money in her pocketbook until I got sick. And she'd always bring in a dozen oranges, tell the kids not to eat it. It was for Richard. She'd bring in some soup. One good thing about being sick at my house, you got special food. So when I got out the hospital on a three-day pass, I took Lil to a movie. Taking her to a movie was like offering somebody the whole world. She couldn't believe it. So bashful and so shy. About that time, 
Lil and I started dating pretty steady. Then again, not too much because she was so bashful. I really found myself lost for words on what to say. Then winter moved in and crowds were so full and lines so long. I said, I've been here almost a year now and I guess it's time for me to get a raise. Still making $10 a night. I walked up and asked the boss for a raise. He wouldn't give it to me. So I quit. Had it pretty rough then, staying home, watching television. People you thought you were a part of, you see them working every week, and you're not. Then I had an idea. I heard someone say there was a nightclub called the Apex that was for sale. I called my good friend, Ira Murchison, and he came by with his car, carried me out there, and I talked to this lady. I talked to her and asked her about a nightclub. She didn't know anything about owning the nightclub, but told me she'd rent it to me for $56 a night. I didn't have two pennies in my pocket. I told her, okay. By this time, it's January 1959. Weather had broken nice, no snow on the ground. Nightclub was in Robbins, Illinois, about 15 to 20 miles outside of Chicago. I knew I had to get into a nightclub where I could do the type of material I wanted to do. As great as I felt at the Esquire, it was still working to a big percentage of Guitar Red's audience. I felt if I went out there and got my own club, I'd have respect as a performer and respect as an owner. I'd have more leeway. My club. I wanted to see the customers treated a certain way. I knew if I made these customers comfortable, had the right atmosphere, I could get the type of comedy I wanted over. So I went out there, and while I was there, this woman looked at Ira Merchantson. She was an old woman, about 70-something years old. She said, you know, you've been overseas, and you're going back again. She was absolutely correct. Ira had actually been to a track meet in Moscow, and he had just returned to the States. I listened to this lady talk. Her name was Sally Wells. I heard her talk to Ira like I had heard women talk to my mother when she used to go and take me with her. I always used to hear my mother ask them, will big prayers be back home? Will the kids be all right? These women were fortune tellers. I remember one time when I was about seven years old, one of these women looked at me and said, you know, you don't believe in me, do you? I didn't say anything because I didn't want to embarrass my mother, but I thought when people go to a spiritualist reader or a fortune teller, it's pure ignorance. This woman looked at me and she said, you know, and then she looked at my mother and said, he's going to be a great man one day. I see a star right in the center of his head. The woman said that when I was seven years old. I never forgot it. I never believed in them, but I never forgot that. I don't think it was what she said. It was the way she looked when she said it and the reaction my mother had. But when I started running track, I thought this was what the woman meant. Now I'm sitting here in a place in 1959, and I see a woman by the name of Sally Wells talking to Ira Murchison the same way this woman used to talk to my mother. So I looked at her and I said, can you tell certain people things easier than you can other people? She looked at me and she said, no. And she started talking to me. It was January 1959. She said, you know, I see you getting married. I said, oh, you have to be in love first. She said, no, I see you getting married. She said, I see you flying all over this country from one end of it to the other with a little brown case in your hand. And for some reason, I always felt the top comics always carried a little brown bag with the material in it. This really impressed me when she said that. She kept talking. She just smiled when she looked at me. She rented me the club for $168 a week. I had a hard time keeping that club going, but I stayed there. All I had to pay was the band. Then I found out how beautiful it was having entertainers that drink heavy because some of the entertainers didn't have anything coming at the end of the three days. They had drunk so much. I got to the point where I resented the entertainer who wasn't drinking because I had to pay him his full salary. I guess this is why I spend so much money in nightclubs today. Give them the salary back. 
then we started running into internal problems that all business people have. I was bringing too much whiskey back to the guy who was letting me have it. By the end of January, I was keeping that nightclub open by getting half a pint of scotch, half a pint of bourbon, half a pint of gin, and a half a pint of vodka and six cans of beer. And as I sold it, I would run across the street and get some more. This was the true test. I was so far in debt, I couldn't see straight. And then to top this off, I had something happen to me that I wasn't expecting. I called Lil and told her I needed some money. Well, when the girl comes to the hospital and brings you $100 and two rolls of quarters and then gives you $800 to take care of expenses, you fail to realize that she's doing this because she's so good inside. I thought she was rich, and I think this was my ace in the hole. I'll never forget. It was the last Thursday in January. I was out of the hospital and feeling good. I was back in business. Money was tight, so I went by to see Lil, and that's when I got the news. She said, I can give you $300, but I've quit my job, and I'm leaving town. I asked her why. She said, I'm pregnant. I said, really? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. The last thing in the world I needed was a baby. I sat and I talked. I knew this was it. At that point, I had to weigh something. I had to weigh this. I was brought up in a home with no daddy in it, and as good and as ornery and as dirty and as rotten as my daddy was, he gave us a last name. Knowing I'm in no shape to get married, knowing I didn't want a kid to have to go under the conditions I had to go under, and to top that off, not to have a name, I asked her, would she marry me? And she said, no. She said I was working too hard, and she wouldn't do anything to be in my way. I insisted that she marry me. I never will forget what old Lady Wells told me the first week in January. She said, you'll be getting married soon. Lil broke the news to me on Thursday, the last Thursday in January. Friday, we got the blood tests, bought the license, and Monday, the 2nd of February, 1959, I was a married man. I explained to her what we had to go through. I sent her down to St. Louis. That same night we got married, we got on a Greyhound bus and went to St. Louis. First time I'd been back home since I'd left. And here I was bringing a strange woman to live with some strange people. By that time, our sisters and them had moved. We got to St. Louis. That was a funny day down there. It sleeted. Got in town that morning. The buses weren't running. The insurance companies had issued orders that anybody that would drive their car wouldn't be covered. No cabs. Got off that bus. Couldn't even walk. Just so happened there was a guy bootlegging. He took us to my sister's house. It was a horrible experience for Lou because I was taking her someplace I hadn't been myself. I carried her there, and then I had to run by and see all my kinfolks and this and that. Then I had to get right back up to Chicago. I told her everything would be all right because the nightclub had to break for me. She stayed. At this point, she didn't have a quarter. She had to buy the ring and the license. I went back to the nightclub, and it seemed the harder I would work, the worse the weather would get. Do you know what it feels like to stay in a nightclub for six months and never walk out of there? Not one night with a dollar bill that's your own? Six months I stayed there and never walked out with a dollar bill that was mine. The bad weather lasted all the way through March and April. It broke a little bit in May, but by that time, I had such bad credit, I couldn't even advertise. Just a few stragglers that knew I was there would come out. One night... Something happened to me in that club. One night in May, I had about six people in the club all night. I was doing miracle work because I had a wife down in St. Louis that I had never been able to send a quarter to the whole time she was there. I couldn't even call up on the phone anymore because my phone bill had run up so high they cut it off. I hadn't paid any rent to the people I was living with in so long. Then I turned around and I got their phone cut off. Plus, I got them into debt. <laughs> but I had to keep that nightclub open. I would cry when Friday would roll around. I would go everywhere I could to borrow money till I couldn't borrow money anymore. All my friends lent me every penny they could get their hands on. The waitresses had never been paid from the time I carried them out there until the time I closed my door. They never complained because they had faith in me. 
I told him every night, next week has got to be the week. It's impossible to be in the nightclub business five months and never make a penny. I couldn't believe it. I'd never believe it. But it happened. Then that first week in May, a guy pulled a gun out in the club. I'm working under the pressure now that the baby's going to be born in May and that the club's got to hit. I don't want my baby born in a city hospital. When the guy pulled that gun out, I walked right over to him and looked him in the eye. Mister, you don't know what I've been through. People jumping up and running out. I said, I guess one of us has to die tonight. What I've gone through in this place here, you need to pull a gun on me to run me out here? God himself couldn't run me out. He turned around and he said he was sorry and walked out. Wow. I didn't want my baby born in the city hospital. So I arranged with a doctor I knew to have Lil sent to a private hospital. When I got home, I was surprised to see Lil there. She said, Michelle was born here on the floor. Greg, when I lay here, I guess the reason I couldn't holler at the hospital, I was so proud that your son was going to be born. When I found it was a girl, I thought you would be mad at me. I didn't know she was a girl until they told me at the hospital. I just said, well, she kept talking. I laid here, Greg, and your sister asked me why I didn't cry and holler. I felt so good. And when it really dawned on me what happened, I sit here on this floor and I thought, not too bad. Dick Gregory's kid stands on the corner and says, Dick Gregory's my daddy. He will never say I was born on the floor. He'll say, Dick Gregory's my daddy. Greg, you can do anything you want to do. You know that, and I know that. Don't let nothing stop you. I said, you know, I'm thinking about quitting show business. Hell, I'm nothing but a peon then. Haven't worked in a big nightclub, only been in one once and that was to see the show. Haven't been able to afford to go back to that one again. She said, Greg, I get lonely here without you, and I cry a lot. I hear your sister telling you you ought to quit that. Greg, for me and Michelle, don't ever quit what you believe in, what you want to do, the things you told me about your mother. If she could do all those things for six of you, I can do anything you want me to do. I understand you can't always come down here. I look for you every day. When the day is gone and the week is gone, I just keep seeing you coming. I know you're on the way. I stayed there three days, left and went back to Chicago and opened up the club. It's June now. Easter Sunday was a good Sunday. The place was packed. I made just enough money for me to decide this place was going to hit now. Suffered through the whole storm, and now the weather broke. Forgot about my back rent. Well, crowds started coming in, and a couple of people started wanting the club. Lady told me. She was nice to me. My license, heat, water bill, taxes. Kind of broke my heart that I had taken a ghost that had been closed up for years, opened it up, held those doors open through one of the worst winters in Chicago. Now I have to have four months rent in. $56 a night times three nights a week times four times four. Has to be in by Sunday, Mr. Gregory. I can say one thing. Track had really helped me because I went out like a champ and like a star. Sort of like seeing the buzzards come in that weekend, looking the place over, looking at the crowd, wondering how they were going to decorate it. Could have been a real bitter pill to take to keep a club open all the winter in all the rain and now have to give it up. That Sunday night, we threw a party. People were sad. People had worked there for six months with no pay and they cried because every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they could look forward to being somebody, being part of a thing, ethical, honest. They look forward to someone saying, excuse me, miss. Look forward to coming to work in a place where the customer was going to be treated right and the help was going to be treated right. That meant more than money to those people. And the last night I took the money and split it with them. I will never forget when I walked down those steps for the last time and I thought about how many trails I had made across the street, how many friends I had made, 
no one would ever be able to say there was gambling, which I had been offered, prostitution, which I had been offered, or hot whiskey. Because of the church structure of that nightclub, I always called it a church. If God was in as many churches as he was in that nightclub with me, this would be a better world. That was my church. That is where I learned to live my final lesson before I hit. I learned how to treat people with all the bitterness that I had to come through. If I would have hit where I am now without that period, I might have been working with the power structure against the people. I had a very special lesson there. When I walked down those steps for the last time, I looked at the people that walked out that were sad, and I said, you know, you people have really been changed. If you kept your eyes open wide, you would have watched a boy grow into a man. You carry 50 pounds of ice. If you don't weaken, you strengthen your back to carry 100 pounds. If you don't weaken, you strengthen it to carry 1,000. Before you know it, you pick up all the ice in the world and haul it. That's how strong I felt. Nobody could lend me their nightclub to practice the kind of stuff I wanted to practice. The average black man at that nightclub had never heard anything but the blue material. No other place could I have worked for six months and developed what I developed there under the pressure that I was under. Then when I hit my last step, I said, I'm ready now. Goodbye, Apex. Goodbye, Apex. And thank you so much. I learned a lot. And I'll not be turning back now. I'm out of work again. No money. When I split the money, I didn't keep a dime. From July to September, I looked for a job, and I never found one. My baby was born in May. Between May and September, I was never able to scrape up bus fare to go to St. Louis and see her. Then one day, I got so disgusted, I just got downright ornery and evil and embarrassed. I called Lil after not being able to call her for two weeks, and I said, baby, come home. I made up my mind that it might be a little bit easier if you were here watching me starve. As much as this woman loved me and as bad as she wanted to be with me, for some reason she told me, that's okay, Greg. I don't want to come to Chicago. Not right now. I couldn't believe it. I hung up and I went back out and I looked and I looked. It's a horrible feeling to go through all the things I'd gone through and I was about ready to take a job shining shoes. It's August now, and I go back to my old nightclub where they gave me $10 a night, and when I got there, I asked for a $2 raise. Yep, I'm right back at the same nightclub, same nightclub where I started at $10 a night. It seemed like 20 years ago. That's how much I had gone through. I couldn't believe that just a little while ago, I had walked up and asked for a $2 raise, and he wouldn't give it to me, so I quit. I knew I could get other gigs, and I did. No business like show business. I'm all right. It's 1960. That year, I made $1,500 the whole year. I averaged out $30 a week. I went back into Robert's show club and stayed a long time this time. I was really proud of myself at Roberts. The first time I had ever invited Lil, Sammy Davis came in with Nipsey Russell. When Nipsey came in, he was the comic, and I was just the MC. When Sammy Davis came in, that's when I learned one of my greatest lessons in show business. It was the cause of me making it in three years instead of 30. Sammy Davis and Nipsey Russell were the biggest attraction that Roberts ever had in his show club. Being that Roberts had to pay me anyway after he tried to tell me that I was laid off while they were there, I told him he should let me MC even though Nipsey was the comic. So they found things for me to do while I was waiting, like help seat people. I guess the whole time Sammy was there, he drew a 95% white audience. For some of them, it was the first time they'd ever been to the South Side. For some, it was the first time they'd ever been to the South Side at night. The place seats almost 1,500 people, and it's packed all the way up to the back door. 
white people are paying something like $50 tips to get a seat close to the front. Nipsey opened up the show and he slayed him. I couldn't believe it. Sammy came on with all of his talents, but you could truly say that Nipsey Russell stole that show. I couldn't understand why. And when I did learn the lesson, it was the thing that made me hit it in show business. I called my wife that night and I said, I'm looking at something that's so strange here. Nipsey Russell is one of the funniest men in show business. And Sammy is the most talented in show business and there's no comparison. And yet, Nipsey is stealing this show. Well, at the Chez Paris, they had what they called AGVA, American Guild of Variety Artists Night. On Monday nights, all of the acts in the AGVA union can go and perform in this big nightclub. And nightclub owners come in and look at the talent. I had gone down many times not knowing that black comedians weren't accepted in white places. The union people kept asking me, don't you dance? Uh, don't you sing? They told me the first spot that would be open for a comedian was about a year and a half off. Knowing what they meant by it, I didn't bother them anymore. Nipsey went over so well at Roberts that they decided to bring him down for Agva night. I went down and Nipsey opened up with racial jokes and nobody laughed. He sat there and died compared to the response of the white people the night before. That was the key to the whole comic problem in America. A white man would come to a black nightclub and he's so afraid and so nervous that anything you mention about race, it knocks him out. The harder he laughs, the more that means I'm all right. But when Nipsey got downtown where the white man wasn't in Nipsey's house, but in his own, the white man didn't want to hear that. And he didn't laugh. That was the difference. Nipsey overshadowed Sammy Davis at Roberts, a black club in a black neighborhood, because this was definitely guilt and fear of this neighborhood, of the black waitress that had to wait on him, of the black guy at the door who took his money. So when Nipsey mentioned racial things, Whitey felt very uncomfortable, and he laughed. And he laughed, and he laughed. If a white man sitting in a black place and a waitress drops a drink on him, he'll jump up and say, excuse me, in a white joint the club might have a lawsuit. So after I figured this out, I knew which way to go and I started working on it. Then I realized at one point, there was gonna be an insult. Some white guy in a white club was gonna call me nigger. Every white person in the club was gonna be embarrassed. This created a hell of a problem because if a white man brings me in his nightclub and I get insulted and customers walk out, they will remember the incident and tie it to that nightclub. Then it actually would be better for this white man to keep me out of his club. I saw the parallel when I was kicked in the mouth as a little boy shining shoes. If a customer calls me a nigga in a nightclub, the owner is in the same situation as that bartender, losing customers over me. I start developing a comeback. And for six months, I had Lil yell insults at me. For some reason, I wasn't getting the answer. A split second of thinking could mean I would lose the whole crowd. Once it happened, people would start feeling sorry for me. And if someone feels sorry for me, I can't make them laugh after I recover. Comedy is no more than disappointment with a friendly relation. A man cannot have relations toward another man when he feels sorry for him. An example. If you give money to a blind person, you don't have a friendly relationship with him. If you think so, let him tell you that what you gave him isn't enough. Your mother could tell you it isn't enough and you wouldn't get mad. But with the blind man, you would. You don't have a friendly attitude toward him. You have a sympathetic attitude. So I've got to figure a way out. One night, I was out of work. Hadn't been out of the house in about four days because I didn't have any money. And there were about 13 inches of snow. I was lying on the couch and I looked across at Lil, bitter at the whole world, nobody to pick on but her. And I said, what would you do if from here on Hello? I started referring to you as bitch? Yes, miss. Jumped out of the chair and said, I would simply ignore you. 
I fell out of the couch and laughed so hard they had to call the doctor because I was bleeding inside. That was the answer that I wanted in a nightclub, that quick, sophisticated answer with no bitterness. That way I wouldn't give the audience time to feel sorry for me. Once I had this, I'm ready. I went into a very unsophisticated white club on the outskirts of town in a neighborhood where I'm dealing with a factory worker whose only mark of dignity is to be the foreman over that nigger and can get away from him on the weekend. Then one night it happened. Guy called me nigger and the audience froze. I wheeled around without batting an eye and said, did you hear what that guy just called me? Roy Rogers, horse, trigger. I hit them so quick and so fast that they laughed because this is what they wanted to believe he had said. Now that I had them locked up completely on my side, I said, my contract reads that every time I hear that word, I get $50 more a night. So would everybody in the room stand up and yell it? Then I got a job in Mishawaka, Indiana, for $10 a night. White people lined up at 8 o'clock to see this thing. On a Saturday night, a group of white girls were sitting over in the lounge chairs far back to the left. One of them yelled out, you're handsome. Every white man in that place froze. The sex angle was thrown right in my face, and they could hate me for it. I looked at the girl and said, honey, what nationality are you? She said, Hungarian. I said, take another drink, and you'll think you're black, and you'll run up here and kiss me, and we'll both have to leave this town in a hurry. I got myself and the nightclub owner off the spot. I left there feeling pretty good because I had tested a white audience with the type of things I wanted to use. The Chicago Playboy Club. An entertainer named Erwin Corey refused to work a Sunday night at the Playboy Club. My agent, Freddie Williamson, got me in there for $50. I never will forget it. It was very cold out. I didn't know that much about the loop. I borrowed a quarter car fare from the people downstairs. That just shows you how amazing life is. For the biggest job I ever had in my life, I had to borrow a quarter. For the job that made me, that skyrocketed me to 5000 a week, it seems like you would have to borrow $1,000. But it was just a quarter separating me from one of the biggest things that would ever happen to me. I got on the bus, but not knowing the right way, I had to walk about 20 blocks to the Playboy. It was like when I was a kid, where I'd get so cold on my paper route, the wind would knock the water out my eyes. I am almost frozen by the time I get to the door, and when I walked up, they gave me the news. Uh, we're sorry, uh, but you can't go on. This room has been sold out to a Southern frozen food convention, and we didn't know it. I think had I not been so cold and so mad, I probably would have accepted it. But after that walk, I explained to the room manager that nothing short of death itself would keep me from going on. It's one thing having local yokels, the poor whites of Chicago, heckle you. It's another thing having the businessman, the man that's spending top dollar, man that's been around, an audience that when it's all over, you can't say these are ignorant white folks. As I sat there on that stage, I went all the way back to childhood, to the smile mom had on her face, to the clever way of being so bitter inside but smiling on the outside. When your rent wasn't paid and you knew they were going to cut you off, when the lights were cut off, but you could see in the dark. I went through all of this, sitting up there on that stage. And when it was all over, I smiled. The audience fought me, and with their dirty little insulting statements, I would accept it and say something very clever back to the extent that they broke. And when they broke, it was like the storm was over. They turned around and they looked, and they listened. What was supposed to be a 15-minute show lasted an hour and 10 minutes. They didn't let me off. Every time I tried to get off, they called me back. When I finally walked off the stage, these Southerners stood up and clapped. One of them looked at me and said, you know, if you have the right managers, you'll die a billionaire. 
work in the Playboy Club, I had figured out the solution to this whole problem of cracking the top white nightclubs. I wasn't broke nowhere but in my pocket. Breakthrough. Interview with Mike Wallace, April 10th, 1961. During his first nightclub engagement in New York City, in the midst of his meteoric rise following his breakthrough at Chicago's Playboy Club, Gregory sat down with journalist Mike Wallace for his first primetime network television interview. Dick, in a matter of just a few months, you've joined the ranks of America's top egghead comics. Your trademark is finding humor in the serious and often tragic problems of your race. What memories of your personal experiences do you carry with you from your early days growing up in St. Louis? We, um, were poor economically, but rich in humor. Coming up on relief and then having the type of humorous mother that I had, there were certain things we looked forward to when we were kids. We knew the lights were going to be cut off every so often. Anytime they were on past that time, it was just a matter that they hadn't got around to our house yet. Mom would walk in or we'd meet her at the streetcar from work and, and tell her, the lights are off, the lights are off. You know, this was a big thing. She would always tell us, well, this is what it looks like behind the moon. And we found out years later when Russia made the first shot that it's black behind the moon. How many youngsters were there in your family? Six of us. And your mother supported the family? She supported us. And you were on relief for a good long time, all the way until 1950. A totally segregated neighborhood. Yeah, a totally segregated neighborhood that we lived in. So you didn't know, or did you know, a good deal about racial prejudice? No, we couldn't find it out too much. You have a lot of cities up north that are so cut up, we don't worry about segregated schools as long as you have segregated neighborhoods. It was a pressure we never actually come in close contact with. You could duck racial prejudice at home in an indirect way for about 10 years before you knew. The only whites you'd come in contact with were the ones in the neighborhood, and they were the best people in the world because they were making their living on you, on the Negro in the neighborhood. So they were kind of nice to you. Yes, the only white people you'd come into immediate contact with were the nice ones. You once said, School was the only place where I could be hurt. What did you mean by that? I had an incident happen to me when I was about seven years old, when they were taking up money for the community chest. At this time, I wasn't aware that we were poor and on relief. I knew a big truck pulled up to the house, and I thought this was something to be proud of. This was dignity, you know. We won't come get it. You bring it to us. They were taking up this money for the community chest. And on a Friday, the teacher would ask, how much will your father pledge to send Monday? I'd always been working. I was in the taverns when I was five years old, shining shoes or washing cars or selling papers. I had some money. So this was one day that I was going to buy me a daddy. The teacher said, how much will your father send? Things were very tough, everybody. So when I stood up and said, $15, well, this was unheard of. The teacher looked at me and said, you know, we're taking up this money for you and your kind. And if you can afford to give this much money to the community chest, you don't need to be on relief. Oh my, this caught me by surprise. And not until then was I aware that we were poor. So then I felt that school was a place where I could be hurt. Oh, I can understand that. Were you in St. Louis during the very tense period when the public swimming pools were being desegregated? Yes. The one where we had the big trouble was at Fairgrounds Park. I use it in my act. All our parents made us get out there, whether you could swim or not. 
they were nice to us because they knew they had to integrate. So they hired a new lifeguard for us. But he was blind. We all walked out to this integrated swim pool on this glorious day, diving board 50 feet in the air. We got up and jumped, and they drained the pool. You went to Southern Illinois University. Right. Who helped to put you through school yourself? I had a scholarship in track. I ran the mile and the half mile. Oh, really? I won the state championship. You had an athletic scholarship, and you majored in business administration. But you left school before graduation. How come? I don't know. Just something that hit me one night. It, it seemed like I wasn't doing what I really wanted to do. How old are you now? 28. After you left school, you got a job in the Chicago post office. But I understand that your sense of humor cost you your job. How come? Well, the post office struck me as being so amusing. It looked like all the postal help had been there 15 and 20 years, and about the only satisfaction they got out of coming to work was to find a newly hired employee putting an airmail letter in the wrong box. And I love to do this because it looked like this gave them new life. With racial pressure in this country, I found a lot of humor and a lot of comedy in it. So... In the post office, any time I found a letter going to Mississippi, I put it in the foreign box. It was humor to me. If it had been bitterness, I probably would have torn it up or destroyed it or something. How do you account for the fact that you were able to escape all vestige of bitterness? Or have you escaped all of that? There's been so many problems that we would laugh at. You take a situation we had in 1958 and they raised the three-cent stamp to the four-cent stamp, and people in certain areas in the South said, we don't want a four-cent stamp with Abraham Lincoln's picture on it. But they wouldn't get rid of his $5 bills. This strikes me as being very funny. The whole racial idea, if you just twist it around backwards, we portray the Indian in this country as being savage. We invaded his land, and all he was doing was fighting for his land, it's the same thing as if I break into your home, if I can overpower you and win, this is one thing. But why come out five years later and paint him being the savage when I broke into your home and ran off with your property? That's right. I don't mean to ask you to do your entire act for us at these prices, but nonetheless, would you care to make some comments on the news? Tell me how you put this stuff together. Do you write your own material? Oh. I never write it. It's just a matter of looking at the newspapers and you find it. This week, there's been so much going on. You have a situation going in Cuba, the aftermath of the Bay of Pigs invasion. I don't believe it's as big as it is. I can see where good propaganda would make it seem so. In other words, if you had three men walk into your house and after you beat up the three and had everything under control, you holler out the window saying... There's 50 guys in here. Well, this makes you look greater, and I feel the same thing is happening there. So I just twist it and say, they probably have bigger fights in Xavier Cougat's band. It's just a matter of twisting it. You take Miami. It's one of the few cities where you can go down and shake a tree and six oranges and seven Cubans will fall to the ground. These are the situations you see in the newspaper. You have the Russian that just made it to outer space, which is a wonderful thing. Then you read where you become weightless. He couldn't feel his hands. He couldn't feel his legs. And he floated out of his chair. He said he could write, but he had to hold the pad. Well, I get like that two and three times a week. And it doesn't cost this country $2 billion. This is the humor that I see. What's the difference between racial prejudice in the North and South? It's actually no difference. In the South, they don't care how close I get as long as I don't get too big. And up north, they don't care how big I get as long as I don't get too close. What are your thoughts on some non-racial topics like President Kennedy? Well, you have to realize one thing. This is the first president we've ever elected in the history of this country that moved into a smaller house. The Bureau of Internal Revenue, now that you're in the higher income tax bracket. Yeah, that's why I smoke so much. I write off about 
180 cartons a year on my income tax. And they haven't found a way to get around that. But they told me every time they see me, I better be smoking. Tell me this, Dick, until how recently, I mean this quite seriously, was money a problem for you? Up until a month ago, last year, the whole year in entertainment, I think I cleared about $1,500. In all of 1960, you made $1,500, an average of about $30 a week. Yep. And in 1961, your income will be what, do you figure? From what I've been reading in the paper, they said everything from $500,000 to $800,000 on the assumption that the record takes off and goes as big as they expect. From $1,500 to $500,000 in one year. Have you ever tried to analyze why this happened? I don't think you can. I've always believed that if you do what you want to do and work hard at what you believe in, you'll never get cheated. But there must be something special in Dick Gregory that at this time in 1961 suddenly made people latch on to you. I really couldn't say. It might have happened last year or the year before. It's just the right time and being at the right place at the right time. The biggest break I had was at the Playboy Club filling in for a comic in Chicago. There was a convention in town and the room was filled with Southerners. I've always believed that my act would go with Southerners because as long as you're telling the truth, regardless of how bad it hurts, you played the first time to a room full of Southerners? What happened? I was supposed to go on for 15 minutes and they kept me on the stage for an hour and 10 minutes. My golly. And there was no bitterness? I had a little bit of heckling at the beginning, but once you can handle the hecklers and just stay right on them, when you first First, try to get a job with the kind of jokes that you do in Chicago, I would imagine it was kind of tough. It was tough trying to get a job simply because you can't start off in show business in the top nightclubs. And when you are very topical and talking about touchy problems, you have to be in the range to reach the man between the eight to 15,000 a year bracket. They think differently. They've read the same books. I tell jokes about the Man Act. Everybody in the nightclubs I'm working now, they've heard about the Man Act. Telling jokes about Kennedy, I don't use the word Harvard, I use the word Cambridge. And all these people understand. Whereas in the lower nightclubs, in the neighborhood places, this is where you're at a loss with topical material and trying to keep it at that level. There are a lot of touchy things that just by wording it in a certain way, it will go over. You must be a happy fellow. I'm very happy. I can understand. Thanks, Richard, for coming and spending this time. My pleasure. Interview with Paul. Okay. So we left off at the last interview with him. So that's where we're going to leave off today, guys. Um, You guys can hear me, right? Just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, how did you guys like this section this time, this chapter? Any comments? I thought it was great. Um, he's got uh -huh. an understanding wife. Lil, she's stuck by him. You know, she's praying that he come home, but she was staying where she was. So mm -hmm. I, I admire her for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No wonder he loves her. Uh-huh. <laughs> Miss Dennis, you have something to say? I just <clears throat> I just found that, excuse me, I've got a cold. Um, I just found that it was interesting how he dealt with the uh southerners, mm. the white southerners, and uh and and how how it got to be funny and and uh and just telling the truth just made him just uh, come out on the top. Exactly, made him more And, and, and per perseverance mm -hmm. is uh, uh, the root of happiness, mm -hmm. uh, money-wise. Uh, uh, if you keep at something and you know, 
I'm a, a firm believer that when God puts you in a place, you either got to make hay or go to bed. So you, if you're going to make hay, you're going to get some money. If you go to bed, you're not going to work. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a lesson in how uh, perseverance and, and keep on trying makes you uh, do way, get where you want to go after a while. That's very true because for six months he didn't have no money. He wasn't. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. Child, he was he was down and out for six months and he had just had his child. So I'm pretty sure that had to be very tough. And yeah, he yeah. Said, yes, yes, yes. And he he made it. He, and yeah. One, oh, he believed. He had trust. He had faith. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm. And it's about about Lil, her being so understanding. Right. Not only that, he had a, a woman that loved him and he loved her. Yes. And, and she stuck by him no matter what. Matter, yeah. Yes. And and I think that that he appreciated her from the very moment he met her. Mm -hmm. And she in turn, saw the goodness in him, and she saw a stick toiveness with him that that will work. That's my opinion. And I think also the fact that he no. saw his mother in her at the beginning of their she relationship. She was a hard trying woman. Mm -hmm. Saw his mother in her at the beginning of their relationship, and that led okay. him to develop strong feelings as well. Yeah. Sherry, you have something you want to say? Go ahead. Speak. Yes. Yeah, so uh what I liked about Dick Baby is you know they have a saying that when doors open, you walk through them. Whatever door open, he went through them, even though someone was slammed behind. He couldn't get back in. He had to go forward, but he, he pressed on and he still pressed on. Right, and all right. you read the rest of the story that you know right. until you know he found what he was doing in the 80s. I mean, I mean, the eighties was what put him, you know, it gave him joy regardless of money or not. Because he was so used to doing things and working and not having a whole lot of money. I was almost like that. I never had a lot of money, but I never was without. Me and my four children, my husband, and what we had was always love. All day long love, night love, even love. And they came up with school, they had mama, daddy love. Okay, you know, and, oh, and, and and that's why I tell you, you know, if you have it in your heart, your dream, you know, and this is what you're supposed to be, go on. That door open, try. It may lead you to your dream. If it don't, let it shut, but go to the next one. You know, go. Oh, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Krista, you know what? That was, the book was being read by Jill Morton. I thought it was Dick Gregory, but it's, it's Joe Morton, the, um, the actor, the actor, yeah, that the was on uh, Scandal. Mm -hmm. He played. Uh, uh, he had a series the girl's too. Girl's father, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. series on TV. Joe Morton played on too. Yes, yeah. yeah, I like the different voices he used, so you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> he had. A lot yeah, of uh huh. I was trying to figure out who voice that was. I knew it wasn't his. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so busy listening to the words and the outcome of what was going on. Yes, Ooh. it was a great mm -hmm. outcome. It really was. Mm. I'm gonna ask my grandson, Mr. Smarty, have you read that book of the gravy? I know he had. <laughs> I know he had, but who he gonna tell me? <laughs> mm. Hey, Crystal, have you read No More Lies yet? No More Lies, no, I have not. By Dick Gregory. No, mm -hmm. I have not. Actually, I was looking at that book um, for us to read. Okay. I heard about that one. But how old is that one? Huh? Oh, it's old. It, it's no longer in print. It's hard to get. I have it. Um, I read it in the sixties. You mm. know when um when we were all reading black books from black. I had me a black history book. <laughs> right. I, I read it in the sixties, and mm -hmm. it, it's so much to read. Uh, like uh, bury my heart at wounded knee. The track. Uh, uh, um, uh, is the track of tears, and that's about the Cherokee Nation, where they made them walk. 
it's so much history to be read that'll put you in tears. I'm gonna search for that. No more lies. No more lies by Dick Gregory. And if you, I, I finally found a book on uh, Amazon, but it was, uh, but I have a copy of it. Okay. Well, it's not out of print of Amazon, Daddy. Was that a soft copy? Well, it was out of print for a couple of years. It, well, it if I, the Amazon guy, yeah, I can go buy it and put it on my Kindle. Then I can get it on my Kindle. Yes, and it's also you see the the library app as well for free. Okay, okay. Right. We have the ebook on on the app, and they have the actual book in some stores. So at Anacostia Library, Benning Library, and Francis Gregory, they have the hard copy as well. His name is Gregory Dick or Dick Gray. Greg. Dick Greg. They got on their book of Gregory Dick. <laughs> well, uh, uh, excuse me, but we don't say uh, this word anymore. But have you heard read the other book by him? The word we don't say anymore. Oh, the N word. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's also oh, yeah. a very good book. No, I don't need that book. I went through it and seen that and heard that and still do. Mm. But that is an excellent It made me book. want to fight at church one time when I heard a Christian call somebody that. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, stand that word you said out the mouth of nobody. Even though that's not, not me or, or us. It's just, it's just a nasty word they gave us. Mm. I'm glad everybody enjoyed this session. And yeah. Yeah. this chapter or these two chapters that we read were really good. I think it were two to three chapters, actually, we were able to get all of the good. All of the good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, next week, actually, I believe next week will be Howard coming on. So um, week after next, we'll be back here reading again the next interview, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your afternoon, okay? I will. I'm going to dream about the book now. No problem at all. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much, Crystal. Have a blessed one now. You guys, too. The, um, next training begins at 1.30, so I believe you guys. What is that one now? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Crystal. No problem. No problem. You guys have a good. Thank one. you, Crystal. Okay. It Thank was you. a great uh, segment. We go, you are gonna leave us so. on, right? Yes. It, it should stay on. Yes. You should be okay. able to. Stay. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. See you next okay. week. See you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, Anne, are you on here? Anne. Where'd she go? He's on here. I got a question for her. He must be away from her iPad. And No, she's sitting there with the earphones on. <laughs> no, I said Ann, not Diane. Oh. <laughs> She know I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, she disappeared. <clears throat> but Sam, I think you would enjoy that book if you get it. I really think you would enjoy it. Oh, uh, we! I, I am. Um, I had two other books of his. Oh, okay. And uh, one of them I did, I did complete. That was in what, 80 something? Yeah. Because yeah. my daughter was loving to read, you know, oh, you know, because uh, Black history got strong with, uh, I know at our school, Black history got strong in 1974 at Bernie Elementary. That's uh -huh. when I first seen the 1966 Black history book that I got a copy of, and it had all our bylaws and all the way Martin Luther King marched to make preschool 
you know, legal for two and three year old. Right, so the mother right. can go out and work and all when uh, people who was doing what uh, receiving receive, you know, could work part time and all like that. Because that law was out for 20 years before a woman decided to get welfare and work too. You know, and it was a lot of stuff in there. You know, it was all about our rights in, that, in our history. Who were you eating? Huh? No, I was talking to my nephew. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, and then I ran. I started paying attention to comedian like Dick Ray because he was doing nightclub. Then, then he started doing civil rights and all. And I really, you know, got closer to him and all, and everything. And uh, what's the other man name? Ah, uh, wow, 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 wow. Ah, uh, the the husband and the wife, Ozzy, Ozzy Davis, them, yeah, them too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, can I tell you that uh, tonight and the, for the while on Channel 7, it's called the 1619 Project. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I think that's a good night. I haven't read it. I've been wanting to buy it, but it, you can record it. It's three hours long on Channel 7 at, yeah. I think, 8 o'clock. And it might, I don't know what it covers, but from what I've heard about 1619 Project, it had, will have a number of things we've been talking about. And these have been, it's so good. The person who did the 1619 Project was given an award uh, applied to the, the school that gave her award and they rejected her. She's now at uh, Howard University at their school is where they accepted her and where she is now um, available. But the 1619 project is on tonight at eight o'clock, channel seven. Yeah, uh -huh. the Black American Center's Law and the Fight to Demonstrate America and its funded ideals. Yeah. Well, it, it will probably, it will. It will be, um, I'm thinking there'll be an update to the things we've been talking about. It will be a, a supposed, I don't know, I, I'm interested. I want, want to buy the, the book, but I haven't been able to do that right now. But we I will. I the library at Miss Barbara. You can? You might, I said you might you be able to find it on the library old. app. Okay. You I'll know try. what I said. Mm -hmm. Brenda, I heard you calling me. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm, yeah, I wanted to ask you. Now, when Alex was going through the week's events and planning, and he mentions he mentions Caroline's name, and I heard you say, mm, and I'm I'm trying to figure out what, what was that about? What I mean, I, didn't, I, oop, I said <clears throat> I was clearing my throat. Well, it, it well it didn't. It sounded different to me. I thought it was something else. I mean, because, let me go. I don't well, you know. well, I'm not starting anything. Uh, what I have, let it go. I'm gonna that. let that go. But I've had a terrible cold, and I was clearing my throat, and I forgot. That's why I cut myself off because I was coughing. That's where I was taking some more cough medicine. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, it just sounded a little different to me. I mean, it didn't sound like a cough, but if you said that's what it was, okay. I said I cleared my throat. I went. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So nobody got something to say? <laughs> well, yeah. Had to answer the telephone. Expected the repair for the wheelchair. So had to answer that, thinking that was it. 
no more an uh, answers. What do what we, what do we, where are we? <laughs> okay. Miss, Miss Walker, what did you do for a living? What did I do? I taught yes. school. You taught? I, what grade? I taught school. Well, I taught uh, first grade. I taught pre-K when they started that. Then I had first grade. And then after I've been teaching that for a while, they promoted me to the fourth grade. Oh, and okay. I, <laughs> I went right back to teaching. Uh, second and third grade reading. Oh, okay. And then I started working with my husband who worked at the National Archives and did family history. Oh, okay. And then that's uh, then I became president of the organization, the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society formed right, was formed in my living room, really. And then we now been in business since 1977, and we have uh, about 32 chapters across the United States. So, yes. and every chapter has to have at least 10 people. So, you we got quite a few memberships that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, I've been nosy, I like to research. I oh, like okay. That's some good things, Barbara. Yes, yeah. nosy, yeah. nosy gets a lot That's, of things done. That's a yeah. good thing. I've, I've gotten, I've, I hope that I've encouraged you to start some of the things. I saw a line on here for genealogy that you could start it. Probably you could get forms and things to help you get started. Uh, where you live right now, your first name. The last name, your married name, those who are and were. No, oh, okay. Names of your names of your children and people they have married. I see that starts another generation, and you go on and the children that they have. After a while, the schools are going to start asking. Uh, that's one project that they could do. It given projects for them was to students to do. And that's one thing that's good and encourages them to research, to go out of the house and you, some things, a lot, much of the information, you don't even have to pay for. You just have to be inquisitive, quote, nosy, and look and find places, find places where the family started and people who live next door around you. On um, Tonight on CBS, they're going to do, I hope it's the, the uh, program they did last Sunday, where a Black family bought a house they had been passing by for years. And it happens to be a house of the people who had enslaved them. But behind them, is a is a slave house that they are uh, they become together and they are restoring it. So I'm I saw that Sunday, but I'm going to try to. It comes on the same time as the 1619 project, but it's on Channel Nine. So that's uh wait the, they just pass, the people have been passing by this big white house a long time, and then they. Decide what they got together and the house went up for sale. And what they found out was the people who had enslaved them. So that became another project for them to do. They got together with the people who, because the people who owned the house were still in the neighborhood and they had been speaking. You know, we talking about don't say the word nigga, don't do this, don't do that. We don't have to say that word. We can go along and be inquisitive and find out research. 
you got city records, you got county records, you got all those those things on there. Even have some in here in Washington D.C. that we can go to. Right, right. Uh, now you now you know what I did. I was nosy. <laughs> I said, yes, I taught school, and I taught in the inner city. I taught it. I started out at Garrison in the first grade. I got from then. I went up to Harrison. I went to Stevens School, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Stevens was was Stevens was had enrollment was based on the people who taught, who, who were at the George Washington Hospital. That's where they had their enrollment came. Mm -hmm. Was there at, before, you know, Stevens had been a hospital during for the Civil War and things of that sort. But after- Miss Marble, you might've been my teacher because I attended Garrison. She I was did. my That's babysitter. She <laughs> was my babysitter. <laughs> I, I really, Miss Walker. Miss Walker, that's why I love listening to you. You have you have so much. You have just a wealth of knowledge. Yes, she does. You, you got you got a way of sliding things in the pe people unless they were paying attention. It go right by their head. Okay. I, I went I'm to. Very, um, I'm very. I'm I very. In, I'm very my... interested in my genealogy. Well, yeah, that's I would love for you to help. Help I think I went through. to Garrison, what is it, Garrison in first grade. You should teach went your class, Miss Walker. Now, I you know. Know, see, I, I went to, I taught at Garrison uh, when I came right out, when I finished school. Um, I'm, I was in New York. I remember my mother was meeting me at the door, telling me, you got an appointment, you got an appointment, you're going to Garrison school. Mm -hmm. and, when I got there, Miss Whitted, Whit Whit was the teacher, and she had been there and put up all her decorations to open school. So mm -hmm. she had to take them all down. I don't remember where she went, but Whitted was her <laughs> name then. That was what year was that? What year was 19, that? I finished, finished college in 1951. 51. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I wasn't born. <laughs> did, did, did you know Betty West, Miss Walker? Beg pardon? Did you know Betty West? Betty, Betty West. Mm -hmm. uh, what she? Betty West. West, West, West. Betty she West. She was to Julian West. I, he became I, a principal. She became a... No, he did, I was, he did. He did. Uh -huh. No. She was uh, she, she the first year that you were at um uh um Garrison, yeah. she was at River Terrace. No, oh listen, darling. I didn't know anything about I didn't know anything about getting going that way. I didn't River Terrace was not in my vocabulary <laughs> location at that time. Remember, I'm just, at that time, I was just 21, 22, and I had, had I crossed the bridge? I think I had, because I mm -hmm. went to St. Augustine School when it was, when it was uh, there on 15th Street, down at 15th, mm -hmm. and yeah. it was on Johnson Avenue. Johnson, oh, that was the back, that was the, yeah, that was the front of it, really. Where yeah. The sister, yeah, Johnson yeah. Avenue. Wouldn't, wouldn't you like to know, wouldn't you like to know what's happening know inside of there? Because you know, they made that condos. Yes. They, they made all that condos. Yes. So, hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Duckett. Hello. 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 So what year did you teach at Stevens? Stevens okay. was uh, 19, was near, it was, that was in the, who so didn't teach Amy Carter? 50s, 50s, late Stevens was 50. I didn't, I, what did I do there? I was more a clerk there. I mean, not a clerk, but I was always organizing papers or 
getting things together or something like oh. that. Oh, yeah, okay. you know, so I didn't, you, you didn't you know, teach President that. Carter. President Carter. Uh, no, I mean, but, no, I went there. there. Yes, I wasn't there when she went there. Okay, okay. okay. No, I wasn't there when she went to Stephen. That yeah, was my, a, my sister worked there, and my granddaughter went there uh, for a while when she lived with me. Her god, oh. her godmother um, uh, worked there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said somebody worked there, Stephen. Yes, Angela Wilkins. Angela Wilkins. I don't remember that name. That's so you know that went out of. <laughs> I flew right over me, darling. <laughs> well, we got a bunch of teachers on here, huh? Yeah, you got who, all. Who are all the teachers? I know Miss Walker. Didn't and them say she was a teacher? Yes, somebody. Yeah. And was you a teacher? I wasn't a teacher, but I was a director. Director of yeah, what? Yeah, a teacher. But the of the Seabury Blind Visually Impaired Center. Repeat. Of the Seabury Blind and Visually Impaired Center on was on Newton Street Northeast. Okay. Yeah. No, I I I never had anybody who I had had to be referred to that. I had to be. Yeah. No, I remember my dad said he went to school. The teachers oh, were too. Like the way it looks. Oh, that looks good. Mine's almost oh, that way. Uh, the school for, I thought the school for the blind. My uncle used to go to school for the blind years ago. So the one you're talking about, you said it was under the bird. Yeah, this, this one was was on Newton, and it's you had to be sixty years old to attend the program. Oh, I don't know how old because I know. I wanna, I wanna. He had been going. You know the house school. Of, uh, I think yeah. it was Northwest somewhere because he would catch the bus. He was blind though, but he get around good. Well, they yeah. Um, I had a blind cousin too, and he mm -hmm. got down pretty good. Yeah. I watched him train him. I watched out the okay. classroom window to see how they train when the when the the place for the blind was at. 14th and East Street. That's it. That's it. That's, that's where I went to get my training from on 14th and yeah, East Street. Okay. As, as a blind person. You should, because you should, because okay. I've been blind for 40 some years. Bridget yes. Bridget was yes. so disrespectful. It was. And, uh, people, and I said, I'm not <laughs> the book up. Is nobody in this world going to make me quit something that I want to do? That's right. We we can tell them no now. And we don't have to. <laughs> We've already put up with them now. So now we can tell them no. And that be it. They just have to take out no. So, uh, and I think we have enough wisdom Mm -hmm. and justice for doing what we've done, for what that. we say. So I, I, would, I don't feel bad. Uh, we can always apologize for, say, I'm sorry or something like that afterwards or later. But right, right now, we can say, no. No, we can say that. So. Can yeah. you forgive me? Oh, forgive me, you know. Oh, yeah. Wait, don't say, don't say forgive me. Just say, wait, um, do we really want to be forgiven? Or do, do we want to just say, um, you know, another we let's, I'm glad we could share this information or something like that so that we could 
continue to work together. It's, uh, and it's a lot of things. I'm sure I've said some things with uh, on iPad group and the iPad group that I'm sorry that I said that I should have. I should have said at you, it another Walker. way. Uh, I, I'm laughing with you, Miss Walker. Uh, not at you. I I I I was thinking that there's some things that I've said too that mm -hmm. I, I, that I thank the good Lord that I kept them to myself and said them said them in a, in a in another manner. That's right. But tell you what, thing don't put it in writing. Don't oh, put no, it in no email. Don't put it in writing. Because, no. no, because those emails can follow you until until the day you die. Oh, wise and, decision. And, and. Wise decision. Hi, Teresa. Wise oh. decision, Miss Walker. I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, I put things. I put things that I feel are important uh, in writing, and uh, and I think things can be done a different way. I, yeah. I don't have. I don't have a problem with saying that. Oh, no, we have to do it. You know, when I was president of the, the, the Historical Society, I used to say, we can talk. Don't put anything in writing that will follow me. I said, I'm not going to put anything in writing that will follow me for years because you never, never know who's... And you see, it doesn't, it doesn't end when you die. You see, I'm suggesting to you to do family history. So that goes beyond right now. Or oh, when you say something, it keeps on going and going. You know. Yeah, so, come back. Here, that's right. It will, also, that's, don't also right. here is where we have the opportunity to go and talk with God and ask him to right the wrong and take away those things that we have said or done that was not pleasing, and that we all have to remember how we leave one's presence. It, yes. You know, we may yes. not see that person again. So we have to think about what we say and do and how we treat them and how we respect them yes. while we're in their presence. Always have a look. I, well, I put aside. It's a, it's a thing, a two, something about two o'clock that I just have to say, uh-huh, it's time for me to have my prayer time. And then that's, and that's what happens. I just can't do anything else. I just, I feel very bad. I feel not bad. I, I feel something when I don't get my, my prayer time in. I'll put aside something else to do. I try to get all business done before 12 o'clock. Do it be, by 10 if you can. I know iPad comes on about that time to reach a bar. <laughs> if you can get <laughs> busy before 10 o'clock, get things done 10 o'clock and, and no later than 12, you'll get some answers. You'll get people with fresh and everything. Okay, I'm through. You want to schedule, huh, Miss Barbara? Huh? <laughs> I said you want to schedule. <laughs> I, I, no, no, you don't say it that way. You say schedule. Schedule. Oh, schedule. <laughs> yeah. Schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Schedule. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're moving into uh, Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. And it's a little different than the norm. Okay. And that being, um, as you can see, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Sir. Yes. Yeah. We're looking at the iPad features, and it, it, it's it, it, we're all we're looking at the iPad program on the whole. We're starting off with what the program is, and then we're going into the actual features because what we've come to realize is that many of you use this device, but uh, there are a few of you still wondering what this device can do and what it can't do. Mm -hmm. And then there's a few of you who thinks that we can access your device. So we need to get all these things put in place. 
so that everyone is comfortable with this device and know how to use it. Okay? Okay. Also, have a very good idea of why you have this device. What was the purpose? Why is this device a gift to you? And, and so we're starting with from the initial, you know, how this problem came about, um, why it came about, what is it that WTA, um, what their role is, what DACA role is, what your role is. So we're putting it all together and it's going to last. We're going to be doing it today. We're going to be doing it on Friday. And if there's need for a third session, and I have a very strong idea, yes, there will be, we'll be also going. And that is looking at those actual um, security features that you may not have in place on how to get them resolved with this device. So you could feel comfortable that no one has access to your device except for you. So it may go into a third session. Um, if you uh, looked at the email reminder and if you looked at your text today, you would see there's some dough prizes in place. Um, dough prizes will be, um, Alex Bell will be doing that towards the end of today's session as well as Friday's session. So make sure you stay in tune. Don't check in and then check out and then come back in uh, later on. And then, you know. Excuse me, Ms. James. Excuse me, Ms. James. Yes. Uh, uh, the screen I had this says Wildtech colon security features on your iPad. That's the screen we're supposed to be looking at. Yep, that's the screen you should be looking at. Okay, okay. all right, okay. Okay, one other thing. Um, when we go through these slides, I want you to raise your hand if you have a question about what is on the current slide. I want to address that question like at the moment, in its moment. So we're doing okay. it different. Yeah, you're raising your hand. If you have a question about what's on that current slide or what it is that I'm covering at that moment, so we can address it right there. The goal is, is that when we're finished with this series is that everyone is fully aware about what this program is and what security features are on your iPad. Got it? Yeah. 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 Right. The next thing is that TVs need to be off. TVs need, now any TV or distraction coming from yours may disqualify you for to be eligible for the dough prize. And otherwise, if I've got to stop and say, turn your TV off or whatever, I'm not going to talk about phones because I know your phones are your, your lifeline. So I'm not going to go there. But if a TV is on in the background, there's a problem. Your phones, yes, I, I do expect that, you know, to cause some distraction if, you know, in the event that it rings. All right. So I'm going to ask everyone to mute their devices. Raise your hand if you've got a question relative to the slide that I'm talking about, you know, any topics that I'm covering at the moment so we can address it in real time. Okay. Got it? All right. So actually, um, I don't know if Tatiana is Tatiana, are you on board? She did have to travel today from um, DACL, so she may not be here on board, but I know she'll definitely be on Fridays. Um, that's the help desk manager on board with delivering um, this topic. So we'll start off with the usual, the disclaimer, and then we'll move right in. So the Wilderness Technology Alliance, DC Senior IBRAD Program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being information design for educational purposes. You should not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by the Wilderness Technology Alliance, including, but not limited to, mobile and device applications, and any social media pages maintained by the Wilderness Technology Alliance DC Senior iPad Program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. 
All right, thank you for allowing me to read that. All right, so we're going to talk about all different things today. For example, uh, this first slide, as you could see, we do take attendance, right? Every meeting we do it, take attendance. We offer library training. That was for those of you having difficulty with the virtual part and like a more in-depth understanding of your iPad functionality. And we have a help desk uh, uh, with a, a very well um, equipped with staff to answer any questions on your about your iPad. And of course, we have a midterm survey that everyone usually receives about after 90 days of being in the program, just to tell us how the iPad is making a change in your life. Uh, moving on to when our next library trainings are, we've got one tomorrow, June 1st at Benning Road, 3935 Benning Road at 1.30 to 4.30, Monday, June the 5th, Northeast 337th Street, 12.30 to 3.30. Tuesday uh, at the MLK 901 G Street Northwest. Wednesday, June the 7th at Lamar Riggs 5401. And that is um, South Dakota Avenue at 12.30 to 3.30. We also, um, for because these sessions are one-on-one, -on -one, um, it's a very good idea to call 202-800-6868 or email the library at, at email library at wildtech.org to reserve your time slot. All right, coming up, I'm excited and you should be too. Juneteenth celebration, Friday, June 16, 2023. Please make sure you either participate or attend one or the other. Um, It'll be a fun activity. It'll be also prizes given out um, at the end, not as far as winning, because no one's winning. Everybody's a winner that day, but we'll be giving door prizes away. All right. So now because um, this calls for attendance, um, what I'd like to do is um, make sure that all your your names are shown. So if your name is not being shown on this um, participant list, I see an iPad person there, forget it. You can't even be on the wheel for the door prize because we're not gonna put iPad on that wheel when we spin it. We've got to know your name. So please, Alex is asking each and every one of you to showing us iPad into a breakout room. So make sure your name is visible. Now, I don't see a hand up right now. I'm going to address that hand. Oh, the hand is gone. Somebody raised the hand. All right. So um, please make sure you take the steps to rename yourself. If you're new, um, please, Alex will be more than willing to help, help you change your name. But if you, if you haven't, make sure you... Uh, tap on the participant icon on the Zoom toolbar uh, where it says me, you know it's you, tap on that. You'll see more, tap on more, and then look at the dropdown on how to rename yourself as shown here on the screen. All right, raising your hand and we talked about that. If, you, if there's something I'm saying at that moment, I'd like you to raise your hand. So I've got to keep a sharp eye for those hand, raised hands, please do not speak out on unmute um, because a meeting this size, we right now we've got 90 in here. We need, it needs to be organized. So raise your hand. How do you do that? Look for the more icon, tap on it, and then use the drop down. And where it says raise hand is shown here, that's what you're doing. You're tapping on that. Your hand will be raised. All right, I see Ruth. Um, Ruth. Can you unmute and let and ask me what is your question? Ruth, please unmute and ask your question. Uh, thank you. I, I have an assistant that's helping me here. I'm not completely blind. I'm just, I have poor, poor eyesight. It's such mm -hmm. a long story. I don't want to hold up the whole program explaining that. But to say that at 89, uh, I'm now a member also of Kaiser 
Permanente and went through a program of getting my eyes checked, blah, 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 before the um, COVID came up. And uh, that was well over four years ago. And I'm still here with no glasses. And the gla I finally had an eye exam at uh, through Kaiser. And um, then I went to Wal Wal Walmart to get the glasses made. And the prescription was so low, I'm going to say, uh, with, with, I'm saying low in a layman's terms, because the, the uh, prescription would, would not fit, me, fit the uh, glasses that they put the prescription in. So I had to take the thing, the, all of that back to Kaiser and ask them to uh, make the um, prescription stronger that, uh, that uh, the one that Walmart had increased the strength hoping that I would be able to use it. However, I will say that when they put that, still they said they had, uh, the Kaiser, they I'm saying, said they had made the prescription stronger, but when it, it was applied to my eyeglasses, it was, still wasn't strong enough. Ms. And Harry, so, how can we help you? What, what is it that we can help you with at this moment? Because I'm addressing this okay, um, presentation. Yeah. It's you, gonna be you, relative you, to what I'm addressing. Can you include me in a program where I can get glasses? Well, no, we're, no, we're, no, we're not addressing that. What we're okay. what, why is it, I'm taking questions relative to what I'm addressing? You can okay. send me an email um, later on, but I'm only addressing what's included in this presentation today, as far as okay, questions. Yes. Thank you so much. About that, but you can send me an email to, to address that separately. Thank you. Um, Teresa, Thank really quick. Miss so um, um, Ms. Harvey, I, I did um, make sure you call that DACA hotline number. That's a good place to start. And, um, you know, just like I told you before, Ms. Harvey, so try that. And Teresa, um, Tatiana is on. Would you um, like her to speak or no? Sure, Thank Tatiana. Thank you so much. Thank you, more than welcome. Tatiana, go ahead and introduce yourself. And um, go ahead, Tatiana. And say. You're, okay. I did, you're, Hi, yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Tatiana Russell. I'm here uh, with WildTech um, as the help desk manager. Um, I spoke before um, just overall about how to contact the help desk. Um, and I'm excited to be here again um, to uh, present with Teresa. So thanks. All right. And Tatiana, please chime in whenever you see a need to. OK? Whenever you see a need sure. to, chime in. Thank you. All right. So, First, we're going to begin with who are we? Wilderness Technology Alliance, also known as WTA. This company is formed on this mission where we are empowering the disadvantaged through computer access, training, and support since 1995. That's how it got started. Okay, as you could see from my slide here. Um, we were, our, our some are contracted by DACL, the Department of Aging and Community Living, um, who serves as district residents six years and older uh, with adults with disabilities and those who care and care for them. We're in partnership with them as far as this program is concerned. So they've said to us, they asked us, can we put together right before the pandemic as it got into its, you know, uh, we found out that there are many seniors, and DACL did, who are isolated in their homes. Um, some of them are dying. It was a horrible, horrible uh, um, time. And so DACL put it together real fast about getting iPads out, and they offered it to WildTech to say, can you get these iPads out to these seniors that we're going to identify and do the training? whatever is necessary to get them using these devices. And basically that's when I came on board and looking at how do we do the training and getting the seniors to be engaged in class and so forth. So WTA is a contractor of DACL to provide the service of delivering the iPads and the training, okay? That's how we came on board. So again, as it says, uh, we are the lead agency and prime contractor for the District of Columbia Senior iPad Program. 
It is designed to reduce senior isolation and increase their connections with family, friends, and the community, all through what? Technology access, training, and support, which is what we do. Um, what did they do? They provide these Apple um, iPad tablet computers um, with 5G wireless network, custom figured applications, and accessibility settings, training, and support. Um, so the new, you address it as new because it is new, Senior iPad program sponsored by the District of Columbia uh, Department of Aging and Community Living. Um, of course, once you receive that call from us, yes, you then be, became aware of it. So during that call, the, 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 count, the intake counselor that called you told you about the fact that your name is on the list to call, you are eligible, right, for an iPad, and certain training would be provided for that. And during that telephone call interview, the intake counselor read to you the following agreement. And I'm going to read off the agreement because some of you are still confused about this agreement. I've listened in on some recordings. What I hear is seniors saying, well, I never got an agreement. I don't remember what the agreement is. So we're going to read it off. You also did receive a hard copy when you got the, the iPad, when it was delivered to you. And this is what it reads. This program, this is what the intake counselor read to you and you agreed to. Uh, one Apple iPad tablet computer on loan until you complete the program requirements. You received a subscription to wireless broadband paid for paid by DACL. You will receive individual telephone training, online group training, face-to-face -face training at your local library and technical support. To participate in this program, you must, here's what was required of you, what was read to you, remain in sole possession of the Apple iPad, it may not be utilized by any other individual other than to provide you training. Participate in a free one-on-one -on -one telephone training or any free one-hour face-to-face training at your local library. Participate in six free tech trainings over Zoom held throughout the year. Utilize the iPad at least three days per week. Give us permission to send you text messages then read and respond to them. Read the occasional emails we send to you and respond when needed. Give us permission to send you text messages, then read, oh, that's repeated. Sorry, that's me. And respond to the midterm survey that will be emailed to you in order to assess your satisfaction, your progress and impact the program. All right. So I hear these questions from time to time. When will the iPad be yours? When is it yours to keep? All right, here's the answer. We have six months, or you have six months, to complete the training after you receive the iPad. If you continue to use it as agreed, then on September 30th, 2023, the iPad becomes your property. If, you, if the iPad is not used as agreed, you will need to return it. So everybody should be clear on the agreement part of how do you how does one keep the iPad? And we also read on that interview the following: the program sponsors gather no information on users through the iPad, nor can we retrieve passwords or lock the device if stolen. But Apple Corporation may be able to help you. However, the use of an iPad creates the potential for others to gather information about you and use it against you, including websites, cookies, viruses, and more. Never provide personal or confidential information by phone or through the iPad unless you know and trust the requester. You agree to indemnify, release, and hold harmless the District of Columbia, DACL, DC Libraries, WTA and their employees, agents, and volunteers from all liability damages and or loss associated with the use, 
non-use training and support for the iPad and software provided as the data it contains, okay? All right, so any questions on the agreement? Everybody's clear on the agreement, right? Everybody's very much clear, no cares, yes. no, I see a hand raised. Okay, go ahead and unmute the question. Oh, me, De Teresa, Denise? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was gonna ask you, I've been in it two years, so was that contained to me by September the 23rd? No, you're, you had a different agreement. Right, that's what I was telling Caroline that day when she was telling you have us. A different yeah, I was telling, she said, no, that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. I was saying, okay. well, no, not for me, because I already did. Okay, All thank right. you. You're more than welcome. I'm Grace. Go ahead, Grace, unmute. Um, Miss Teresa, mm -hmm. so if the, okay, I think I, I think this young lady just answered the question I wanted to ask. So if we just received our app, app our, our uh, machine, this year, I thought it was after six classes attended, or no, it goes to the 20. Okay, so did you just read what did you want? I, it's obvious that you aren't clear on what I just read. Now, uh, I'll go back no. to it again. Okay. It says oh. that you have six months to complete the training after you receive the iPad. If you continue to use it as agreed, then on the ninth month, 30th, 2023, the iPad becomes your property. No, no, ma'am. I'm just saying I just misunderstood when it was told to me by the um, information person. I just misinterpret what was said. I have no problem with it. I, I got a clear understanding of what's going on. And thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, we want these yes. concerns to come up now. That's the whole yes. idea. Of <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we do have some intake counselors. I, I think, um, Tatiana, you do intakes from time to time. Am I correct? Tatiana? Sorry, no, I, have, I haven't done, um, I haven't done, I don't do the uh, intakes, just the one-on-one -on -one trainings and um, help desk. Okay. So you can chime in on that when we get to that. Sure. Uh, all right. So, so what is WTA commitment to the senior iPad program? Okay, we promise to deliver core technology topics to our senior participants. To do so, we have mobilized all of our quality virtual sessions around several priorities. One, to offer a service that not only meets the interests of our participants, but to surpasses their expectations. Okay, two, provide topic of interest for enhancement of our senior citizens daily activities. Three, professional caring staff. Four, provide valuable resources through technology. Um, bring in speakers, presenters from time to time. And most importantly, the privacy, we offer privacy to all of our participants. And when we say that, I'm gonna break it down as to what I mean in terms of that. And this is through this method confidentiality, integrity, and availability. That's right. WTA is committed to the privacy of our seniors seriously by adhering to what is known as the CIA triad, as shown below. Notice here. And this is uh, in my field of teaching. And Tatiana, you can chime in because I know this is your um, one of your area of specialty what is known as the CIA triad. This is a, what you would say a, um, an understanding in the area of cybersecurity. When you're handling somebody else's data, like your personal information, you've got to agree in technology to these three areas. The first thing you have to agree to is confidentiality. It That's is a set of rules that limits access to information. You've got to agree to integrity, which is the assurance that the information is trustworthy and accurate. That's and right. available is a guarantee of a lot reliable access information by authorized people. In other words, we can't just give access to any and everybody your personal data. We just don't do that. 
We can't do that. We've taken an oath to abide by the CIA trial and that we will keep. And that is our staff. If somebody uh, sends me an email and asks for someone else's in the, uh, the uh, group, can I get her phone number? Can I get her? No, I need, that is That's not right. everything. That's right. Confidential, okay? So That's keep right. that in mind. On your side, we are told, I remember when I was hired for this job, back when it initiated, that I'm dealing with a very po a vulnerable population. And that is, is to care for our seniors. So keep in mind, we are on your side. We're protecting you. Tatiana, you want to say anything about this? Go ahead. Yes, I want to definitely agree to what you said. We, um, especially us as help desk, um, the fact that we are assisting you with some what may be sensitive information like your password and things like that. We do tell you not to tell us, but if you do, we like Teresa mentioned, we take an oath with protecting that information. So to be honest too, I think sometimes the people that are closest to you, that could be family members, that could be people that come in and out of your homes, they can be potential threats mm -hmm. to your confidentiality, okay? So like, like Teresa mentioned, we're on your side, we're here to protect your information um, and we wanna make sure that you get the best services from us uh, as possible. Thank you, Tatiana. And Dennis, I see your hand is raised. Go ahead and unmute. I, I'm sorry, I, I, was, I did something wrong. I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. Moving right along. All right, so what do we mean by confidentiality? It is roughly equivalent to privacy. Confidentiality measures are designed to prevent sensitive information from unauthorized access attempts. It is common for data to be categorized according to the amount and type of damage it could be done if it fell into the wrong hands, okay? We don't want anybody getting at your personal information. And we're going to protect you from that. Integrity involves maintaining the consistency, accuracy, and trustworthiness of data over its entire cycle. Data that must not be changed in transit and steps must be taken to ensure that data cannot be altered by unauthorized people. Okay? And then there's the availability, means the information that should be consistent and readily accessible for authorized parties. This involves properly maintaining the hardware and technical infrastructure and systems that hold and display the information. Wherever we've got your data, we've got to maintain that hardware that no one has access to it, okay? Other than authorized individuals. Right. Then it's encrypted. I think you need to understand what it means. When you see that S at the end of that HTTPS, or you see that padlock, this is what they're talking about. Mm. In anything, for example, data that can identify the patron, which includes your username, password, and contact information, such as your address, your phone number, and email address. In these cases, data is transmitted using what is known as SSL encryption and stored on disks that are encrypted both at rest and within the database, meaning anything that belongs to you is usually encrypted. So outside of us, only those that have access to that data, meaning us, anything beyond that, anybody else beyond that, what if they were to infiltrate the, the, the um, system, it would be appear to them as encrypt data, meaning it's not readable by the eye in English language. It has to be decrypted by a computer, another device. So that when you hear the term encryption, that's what you think. And, and, and just like it, it shows here, zeros and ones, lots of zeros and ones. Can you tell me what's going on there? No, none of you can, nor can I. All right. Here's something else that you should be aware of. Um, from time to time, Alex will ask you or invite you to update your operating system of that device. Why? Because operating system is, is an ongoing, uh, it's, it's, it's like the whole, I can, I can I say, the engine of your device, meaning without the operating system, 
your, your device wouldn't work. And if the oper operating system have some faults in it, like if a hacker broke in, then it's going to impact you. So what Apple does is they update the operating systems every just about every month or so often to make sure that all back doors that the hackers got into are now closed because the hackers are very smart individuals. They're wise. And so they're always looking to see where there's a crack or if there's a crack. And once they're in that, they get through that back door, they could be into your device. And how is that done? So they're up, they, up, they update the operating system. They pick what is known as security fixes. Software updates can include newer improved features. So they're always improving the operating system of the iPad to make sure that you are getting the very best out of that device. All right. So with that in mind, they, they have what is for especially, this is Apple, is known as what is called rapid security responses. There are new types of software released for the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac, their products. They deliver important security improvements between software updates. For example, improvement to the Safari web browser, the WebKit framework, uh, and, and a whole host of things. They may also uh, be able to mitigate some security issues more rap more quickly, such as issues that might be exploited by uh, or reported to exist in the wild, meaning hackers have gone in. Um, so they're always updating, as you can see, the uh, it's, it's the operating system is labeled as the iOS 16.1.4. People spend, or developers or security, spend hours and hours every day looking for these little cracks where <laughs> hackers are trying to break into the system. So I'm not saying um, no one can get into your iPad. What I'm saying is that just like um, nothing is 100% is there in life. At least we don't, we only think, well, what is 100% in life? That debt and taxes, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> uh, your iPad can, yes, hackers may access it. And we're gonna be teaching um, our talking, especially Tatiana and I, how to lock down that system to make sure in an event, someone is trying to access your iPad. All right, so on that iPad that you received from us, I said your iPads are delivered to you with preloaded applications. Yeah, they came preloaded. The iPad comes with certain um, built-in such as Safari, Mail, Contacts, I, iPods, Photos, and Calendar. Icons for each application appear on the iPad's home screen as shown here, a host of them, okay? Uh, I see two hands are up. Let's address those hands. Go ahead, Sandra, unmute. And while the- Teresa, mm -hmm. we were told that the iPads the other night we're going to be out at 9.23, but now I see 9.30. It's the end of the month, yeah. the fiscal, the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Huh? This September? Yeah, they, the they were, it the was last told, day of September. Mm -hmm. No, they was told <laughs> us uh, last night that it's 20, 9.23. Well, I don't know who told you that. Please go with what I'm telling you. I don't 2023. That's that may be what that is. 2023. No, it was saying 923. 923 means September 2023. The last day of that month. Okay, that wasn't what we were told, but that I'll go to that. That's fine. And uh, on the um things that you said. <laughs> We had to sign when we got the iPad. I never signed anything. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, it, what I would say, you when you agreed during that one-on-one -on -one interview by telephone, you say, I accept, that's your agreement. That's why it was recorded. Now she's going to tell you it ain't happened. <laughs> okay. When you say I accept, we also told you in that interview that this was being recorded. 
And I know that for a fact because I was one of the very first trainers on this program. And I said to you in the very beginning, this call is being I talk to you. I didn't talk to you. I didn't talk to you. No, I'm just telling you. I am oh. telling you, you are told that you're being recorded and whatever you agree to is being recorded. Well, somebody messed up. That's all I well, got. We're not going to get into up. that. I'm not getting I'm not going to get into it either, but I'm just telling you somebody messed up. Right. But what I'm telling you, listen to what we're seeing here, and that's what it is. So that's why we're doing this, because there seems to be, um, I don't know, gossip, rumor, whatever it is going around about what this program is all about. So we want to clean, we want to put an end to all of those, you know, false information or whatever it is, it is. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Next, Wilder, you have your Hi, how are you? Hi, mm -hmm. how are you? Hello, everyone. My question, I hope it's not off the, off the frame, but I, uh, since I got my iPad, I purchased an iPhone, and I somehow or another have screwed my iPhone up. All of my apps, I can't get to anything. Uh, I have to um, hit the side button and ask Siri to open up contacts, open up uh, 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 Gmail. Uh, can you let me, is there, I, I heard that the, the individual trainer was on there. Can you tell me when and where there's going to be a, uh, another one-on-one? -on -one? And can I uh, go to the class with my iPhone or, or do I just have to be the iPad? So I'm going to refer you to call the help desk. Yeah, I'm going to tell you to call the help desk to get the information. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can get, I can go with my iPhone. My iPad is fine. It's my iPhone I'm having problems with. Just bring them both. No, so no, 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 no. Well, I don't know if we work with iPhones, but first, um, yeah. Well, that's my <laughs> question. Can, uh, yeah. That's my question. I don't want to go to the one-on-one -on -one class if you all don't do iPhones. I only got it because I had this iPad and I wanted to, you know. I can't hear you. Hello? Yes, I'm, I'm listening, Wilder. And Tatiana is the help desk. She addresses the iPad. That's what she addresses in her department. Okay. Okay, so no, okay, no. Now, no, um, if so, here's here's my question. Um, are you trying to do something with your iPhone on your iPad? Is it a device associated with your iPad that you're trying yes. to do, or are you just focusing on your yes, both iPhone of them alone? Are connected. Both of them are connected together. Whatever's okay. on my iPad. Then yes, just... then yes, we can help with that. So you can oh, bring great, both. Great. Yeah, if it was just your iPhone and nothing no, with no, your no, iPad, no. then we couldn't help. But if it's two devices together. Those yes, devices, yes, yes, then we can help. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Grace, go ahead. Go ahead, Grace, unmute, ask your question. Grace, go ahead, ask your question. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I y'all um, everybody good afternoon. Um uh oh, Miss Teresa, I'm sorry. Cause I was okay. calling to find out. I was calling to find out, oh, what I was calling because of my mind, the trouble thing, the way it says, trust me, my cancer, it just sometimes blacks me out. But listen, I was calling to ask, okay, the games and things that they have, these apps that they have on my phone, how do I get rid of them or am I able to get rid of them? What very good question, call the help desk. Okay, that's a good question, okay. All right. I just appreciate however, call the help desk. Okay, I appreciate that, but I ain't going nowhere. I'm listening. I like this training right now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. So Teresa, as you really quick, um, you um miss a slide before this slide. Um, so go back two slides basically. Oh, this one. Okay. All right, so Wildtech Senior iPad training facilitates our participants to harness the power of technology to cha change no matter what age, no matter what age. Our classes, speakers, videos, and activities help seniors learn new skills, save money, exercise, make new friends, and so much more. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so in addition to the apps that are um, preloaded onto your iPad, Dackle thought it was a Great idea, and I agree with them 100% to add additional apps, just that's 311 that you can seek help with their app. Um, this one, green one, represents 
I think how to get to know your iPad. And there are many other apps. Um, I didn't put them all here, but there are several of them that, that are there that da da Dakalo suggested should be on that, your iPad. All right. In addition to that, we also get got the uh, District of Columbia Public Library to add other apps, free music that you can listen to, Canopy, where you can watch, I think up to nine movies, access nine movies per month, digital books and magazines, where you can learn tech, LinkedIn, where you can learn anything about technology, and then Mangle, where you can learn different languages. These are all um, provided by um, DCPL, for your convenience. So you can be at home and have access to all these different features. All right, now, notice a big sign says mandate Harry, or oh, one would say technology mandatory. Uh, the virtual class is held by Zoom, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 1.30. Uh, these modules were created in mind um, by me and, and others came in and, you know, uh, had other um, added features to it, especially Alex Bell, I have to give the credit to him, um, that in order, this is the first part of the, well, it's actually the second part of the agreement, that you must complete the six modules, right? Module one, introduction to your new iPad, two, buttons accessibility and features, module three, email apps on your iPad, four, useful settings and apps on your iPad, uh, more about the library apps, your keyboard, the control center, module six, all about Zoom. These are things that I felt that were critical in you getting acquainted with your iPad. Once you got this on board, then you basically can begin. In other words, you can begin sailing your own boat. You take the rudder from there. But in order to begin to use it, you've got to understand these basic features of what can you, you know, how can you utilize your, uh, your iPad? And so these are like all of the instruments or whatever you might want to call it, tools uh, we put together in a module to assist you. In addition to that, I realized wait a minute, we've got these seniors who've been attending these classes. By now, some of them must be hungry for more knowledge about how to use this iPad. So we instrumented the advanced training, which is held in the morning. And we do things like apps on the iPad, um, cybersecurity, iPad, iPad maintenance, navigation. We talk about Zoom, social media, email, and more. And we seek your input and what else you would like to learn about. I get, I do get requests from, we want to shop online. We want to learn by Twitter. We want all these different things. And I take those ideas. I go out, do research, come back. And Alex and myself have been presenting on topics requested by you. And that's how, and just about everybody's invited to it. 1030, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay, I see a hand raised, Lynette Rooney, go ahead, unmute. Hi, uh, Ms. James. Um, you were talking about the apps that were on. So were the apps, they all added before we received the iPad or was some added after we received the iPad? Excellent question. <laughs> see Tatiana is shaking her head. We do not. Do not, listen to me, I'm going to underline it and bold it. Have access to your iPad after you've received it. Okay, so, all right, that answers that. So I just want to say that the Zoom classes has been very helpful to me for uh, the, the Wild Tech programs and for other Zoom classes that I take. So I really have learned a lot of how to navigate through the Zoom uh, platform. So thank you very much. Katia, you want to talk about the technology aspects of that part? Yes. Okay. So the apps are, as two minutes, they're already pre-downloaded on there. Okay. So what that means is those apps that you see that might be um, like, for example, from Dackel, um, like 311, those apps are already on your iPad. Now, some of you, if you do not utilize your iPad, if your iPad has just not been used for a long time, you might see them start to update 
that doesn't mean we're downloading anything. That just means that the apps are either updating. And if you are a person who just received your iPad and have not turned it on, those apps might still continue to download, but it doesn't mean we're accessing anything. Those apps are already downloaded on there. We're not doing anything to it. Systems update and download all the time. So that's not us doing anything to them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yep, keep in mind, we don't have access, nor do we want access. <laughs> okay, very good question, Lynette. All right, now, uh, we offer, in addition to the training, we offer uh, DC resources on Tuesdays where we deal with senior daily needs, history, projects of interest, entertainment, transportation, housing, library resources, food, health and safety, medical insurance, legal counsel, just like the one we had yesterday. Um, we, in addition to that, on Thursdays, we have, these are vendors where we actually pay them to come in and speak. Um, like, for example, we have Dr. Monday that talks about nutrition. That was one of DACL's requests. They wanted you all to get more familiar about your nutritional needs and to get a better understanding more on those topics. So Dr. Monday is the one she's been recruited or contracted to do so. Then we brought in the mental health needs because as we all know, um, we're dealing with a vulnerable population not only are we dealing with one, we're also dealing with what is the post-pandemic, which means there are a lot of mental health needs required, not in just the, the senior group, but in all groups. Mental health right now is at its crisis. As you see the news every day, you know, it's all has to do with post-pandemic. So my biggest concern is how are our seniors dealing with the post-pandemic and the loss of those loved ones that, you know, they that went out during the pandemic and to keep you focused, engaged and feeling loved, accepted, inclusion, whatever it is, so mental health. Then we also have cyber, cyber senior that comes in with more technology ideas, talking about how to do whatever on your computer, the things we don't cover in the modules nor in the advanced group. We have the public library talking about what apps they have available and not only the apps, what access do you all have to the library? from the comfort of your home. And then we have Washington Home now who's been recently talking about gardening. So interest groups come in once a week to cover different topics. I see we have four hands raised. Go ahead, Adele, unmute. Adele, unmute. All right, while Adele is doing so, I'll go with Mandy because I see she's already unmuted. Go ahead, Mandy. Hi, uh, for Teresa and Tatiana, a quick question. Um, for those of us who have been on the program for, um, I guess in my case, it's going to be uh, almost two years. Um, when Apple provides iOS updates, security patches, and um, new features, every once in a while, they start to phase out older models. What do we do when they no longer support the seventh generation iPad? How do we, how do we keep security patches up to date? Good question. Tatiana, you want to address that or should I? Yeah, I was just going to say we cannot um, replace anything. Um, we would, you would have to end up purchasing. If you want to upgrade, you'd have to purchase your own. But Teresa, you can, I don't know if you have something different. <laughs> well, what I, what I, 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 I was more asking in, in the light of how, because I've called Apple and they give you conflicting information. Sometimes they'll tell you <clears throat> when, while we will continue to provide security updates, but not the new features. And then other times they'll tell you, we're not gonna do either one. We're not gonna do anything. So I guess which, which piece of information according to you is actually correct. And, or if they, you think they don't provide anything for the older models, any suggestions on how to keep, you know, viruses and things out. I have, I can answer that question. So I'm only going from experience on my years in this industry. The operating system, once, uh, for example, Apple or Microsoft, whomever decides they're no longer um, uh, acknowledging 
on the device, an operating system that has been outdated, they actually stop patching them. They no longer provide any updates on them and they must move on. It's a, it's a fact that we must move on. Now, it's gonna take years before they stop for the second generation. It's not gonna to happen tomorrow, okay? They take several years before they move on. For example, it was only a couple of years ago they stopped providing updates on Windows 7 and Windows 7 was out from way, way, way back. And they notify you like a whole head of, ahead of time when they stop providing updates on the operating system, a complete year or more. I remember that because I dealt with the updates, moving devices from the updates from Windows 7 to Windows um, 10. So I wouldn't be concerned about that right now, man. Now, in the event, once they've done that, the best way is to keep your system secure. That's the best advice. And by, you might want to add a software on it to protect it from you know, hackers, buy into your own software. And we're going to cover that on Friday. OK? Can, can I also say something, Teresa? Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, so, um, so yes, what Teresa just said was right. Um, generally, um, Apple devices, um, they support their devices for roughly around six years, depending on if um, the hardware can support the new features added to the operating system. But because of the seven gen iPad, it came out in 2019. And, you know, it's, it's pretty good on its own because it has a, um, a good, you know, um, a good um, operating system. And you know the, the internally, it's it's a really good system. So even after those six years, it's really unlikely that Apple will retire it. So um, I would estimate that around to be around ten years or so before there's a major update that requires a new structure. So I would not be worried of that um, for for a couple of years. So it it came out in 2019. So six years after that is 2025. Uh, again, because it is um, a relatively new device, I would expect it to still be supported um, for at least another um, seven or so years. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, Mandy. Okay, because that is in line with what I thought, except that when I called Apple, they told me that they generally uh, maintain for three to four years. And then they pointed out, like I have an iPhone 8, um, they pointed out as that as an example that even iOS 17 probably won't be provided to people with the eights because um, they just like took out the sixes and the sevens. So yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So the, yeah, the iPhone eight that is re it's relatively older in comparison to the seventh generation iPad. So that again makes sense. So for well, the iPhone, eight came yeah. out in nineteen. I got it in nineteen. So. Yeah, yeah, but the actual Actually, iPhone, it's, it's a little, it's a little older. So, um, mm -hmm. if, if if you get to that point, I would recommend upgrading to at least the iPhone 10. So, if if anyone wants a new iPhone, I would recommend the at least the 10 or above to get you know the most out of that single phone. Okay, so just just to clarify, because one person at Apple told me one thing, and somebody told me something else. One told me that even if they don't provide you uh, the new features, they would provide you security patches for bugs. And then somebody else told me, no, they don't provide either one. Do you happen to know which is correct? Um, I would say it's based, you know, on per device and what type of device you have. So when you have, whenever you get to that point, you can always check to see if there's an update um, at that point. But um, I'm assuming Apple would um, say some type of uh, literature when that occurs, if that were to ever happen. So I would say um, just check, you know, settings general and software update and see what it says. So um, just when you get there, that's when I would either do some more research or call our help desk or just uh, look up Apple's information and, and call them again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Andy. We're going to go with Adele. Adele, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, first, uh, on the screen that we have on now, the interest groups, mm -hmm. Washington Home, uh, is that just a title or is that an organization? Organization. That's the name of them. Where are they located? There's an S missing, Washington Homes, it's called. 
I should, I, there's an S missing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an organization, it's a nonprofit organization for seniors as well. You might want to explore them online, what they I can speak. do for you. Yes, I, it's, 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 called the, yeah, it's called the Washington Home, a charitable foundation. Um, they are located on Connecticut Avenue, but they have a whole website. Again, it's called the washingtonhome.org. Yeah. You can look up that, all their information yeah, there. That's what I was trying to find out. Uh, they, the Washington Home uh, yes, on Connecticut Avenue, I believe it is. Thank, yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. Nope. The other question is uh, the advanced training that you have on Thursdays, I believe. At it's 10 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday. That's what I wanted to ask at 10 30 a.m. Um, yes, ma'am. You, you, don't, you don't have that on Tuesday and Thursday? No, Tuesdays and Thursdays are our lunch clubs and our guests, whether that be a DC resource or the interest group on Thursday. So, I we see. Have, so we have each day has a different set of classes depending on what's available. So, again, I see. If you look at the daily email, you can look at all of our sessions that are upcoming for the week. I see. Thank you. No problem. Thank yeah. you, Gail. Brenda, let's go with Brenda. Oh, no, Joycelyn. Sorry, Brenda. Let's go with Joycelyn. Joycelyn Mercer. While she's unmuting, go ahead, Brenda. Well, I just wanted to uh, ask, um, now, when we have our food uh, club, the uh, cookbook club, um, the owners, well, not the owners, but the keepers of the, the cookbook, they're saying that their information disappears and then it, it reappears. <laughs> so how does that, what would that cause that? Is that okay, so that's, or? A, so that's, that's a very good question. And this program is designed to explain all of that. So can you hold on and we'll explain that later on. We will explain that. I, I, I listened to the recording of that one, and I'm like, yeah, I really need to get you all on board and what, you know. Anyway, okay. we will address that. It's being addressed. Okay. <laughs> go Thanks, ahead. Teresa. All right, Joycelyn, go ahead. Yes, i like to know. This is my second time on this iPad. And I, really, I couldn't get that mute to, um, to, to break loose. Anyway, i like to know, is there a manual that we can get the operation for the operations uh, iPad. Um, Miss Joycelyn, that should have came with the uh, with your package when you received your iPad. Um, we actually just revamped it for um, our new seniors. So in that packet, in the package that you received from our delivery driver, there should be a whole manual available to you on how to um, like use the home screen, how to touch. There's a question and answer in there. So please oh, check. No, I, I, I didn't get that. Yeah, it, everyone receives it. So we, we you know, you, you need to look at the, your materials again. I'm going to look again. I'll look again. Look for that packet of papers. But it's it's given to every new senior and everyone that joins the program. Oh, should be okay. All I saw, so all I saw in there was a, the only thing that I saw was a card that had a little piece of paper. Uh, I don't have it handy. And I'm bedridden, so I can't get up. I can't walk. So, uh, but I, I'll have my husband to check again because he, I told him, let me see the box. This has got to be a manual. Yes. But it's. We didn't, see, we didn't see any, papers. we didn't see any manuals. I'll check again to be absolutely did sure. Your, did your um, iPad come in a black sleeve? What did it come in? Oh God, let me see how did it come in. Yeah. If it came in a black um, packaging, the manual will be slipped in there. So it wouldn't be probably in the box. It might be in that packaging that it came in. So hopefully, I don't know if he threw it away, but if he did, oh. it might've been in there. <laughs> it's not. Okay. I, okay. okay. I, I'll, ask, I'll ask my husband because he, he, he received the package and he brought it up here to me. Uh, Cause what's her name? Wynn brought it up here. Anyway. Okay. I'll check. I'll check. I'll ask him about that. Uh, my other question was, um, well, can you hook up a printer? To this iPad, like can for instance, not, if I want to, not, I want to type can a document. We not go there at this moment. Mm -hmm. We're not ans We're answering questions relative to what we're introducing at this point. Oh, okay. Those questions you can leave for the help desk. We're trying to oh, address okay. certain things, so okay. we want to answer that question. Don't get me wrong. We're here for mm -hmm. that, but we need to address what is relative right now. But the oh, help okay. desk is that. So if you want to call 
800-6868 and get that question answered. Or oh. attend one of our modules and access during the module. Okay. The next module will be Monday. Okay. Monday. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's right. Monday. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Moving ahead. Okay. We've got hands up and yeah. we still got a long ways to go. Tanya. Tanya. Uh, Tanya. Yes. Tanya. Sorry. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back because um, I had graduations and doctor's appointments, but and I had missed a couple of ones. So you, um, like the food and nutrition one, it was one, I think it was last week, I think. So do they repeat itself? Um, like the, the same thing, like if I miss something, do it keep coming back? Or do they just stay different, you know, every time? I'm telling you for- I don't like to miss too many Wait a minute. Let's, let's just, you wanna keep things on a lid because we still got a long ways to go. Nutrition is held one Thursday a month by Dr. Monday. Okay. Uh, anything you missed will be, rec it's recorded and you can access it via YouTube or through our website. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Next Thank we've got Grace, go ahead, Grace. Grace, you have a question? Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was calling the old that say to the individuals when I received my package, my um, guidelines came in and my package was brown, a brown envelope with my uh, um, iPod in it and everything. All of it came together. And my little booklet to explain everything to you, that's what came in it too also. So if something was missed, Maybe they need to contact um, Department of Aging to let them know wherever they come excuse from. Excuse me. No, excuse me, Grace. Please do not go there. We will address that question at answer. Oh, I'm, thank oh, you. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, thank you. Grace, you, thank you, you started in the program in the, in the middle of last year. So, yes, everyone's packaging is going to be different. So, any questions? Oh, I apologize. I, I apologize. I'll have best thank number. You. Thank you so much, Grace. All right. Adele, I'd like to move on. Do you have something relative to what is being shown now? I'd like to move to my next. Yeah, I just, just want to say, I heard the lady said she didn't receive a manual. What I received is um, about 20 Xerox pages um, telling you about the program, the, uh, about the iPad. Um, was there an actual manual uh, given? That's it. That's it, Adele. That's it. Yeah, the the Thank Xerox you. pages. Okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. That's Moving right along. Um, must move on. Um, it's going to be a long. I mean, we're almost an hour, and we still haven't even gotten halfway through. So I'd like to move on. Now, we do provide, in addition to training, a lunch hour social and monthly movies. Uh, for those of you who've never attended it, we do provide on on the third, the first and third Thursday of each month at 6 p.m., we do a movie by, of your choice. Uh, a decent movie, of course, clean, a movie. On uh, Mondays, uh, lunch hour, we have the sports edition. On Tuesday, we have food and nutrition, not by a, a provider, but a discussion held on nutrition. And that is headed by Caroline Beasley. And then on, Tuesday evenings, we have a club that's been formed from, it's like a takeoff of the actual program recipe where they're actually creating, they're putting recipes together and putting a book together. And that's held on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. On Wednesdays, um, the first Wednesday of each month, we have Howard University who talks about the various aspects of the pharmacy, your medication, um, patients, portals, and things of that nature. Oh, and we also have a book club. Book club held was held today on Tuesday, three Tuesdays of each month. Um, where no Wednesdays, um, headed by Crystal, and she talks about they're actually reading a certain book right now. Join the book club if you have interest in um, books. Now we're going to talk about Zoom. 
So issues came up where, you know, on Zoom as well. So we need to address that. Classes via Zoom. Zoom classrooms, as you know, we're in one right now where we're learning uh, different things, sharing things. So Zoom came about, Zoom was always popular before the pandemic, but then became the way of classrooms during the pandemic. I went from being in the classroom to Zoom. All right, so how our classes are trained and why was it instrumented that way? Because of course, because of the pandemic, we didn't want the seniors coming out, bringing the virus out, we wanted them to feel safe at home, giving them something to do daily. So classes began virtually. We didn't even have library trainings during the pandemic. We did not. It was all headed out via Zoom. So we started off on Zoom. So why Zoom? Because it brings people together to grow, learn, and life, live life in it, to its fullest in the comfort of their homes. Virtual programming has enabled many senior centers to continue during the pandemic and has also provided essential social connections for individuals. Yes, during the pandemic, the only time you, you could see another human being was via Zoom. And I remember when it all started, I, I, this program was not in place, but then the churches were being held many by, by Zoom. We had many seniors. I made it a personal mission to help anyone who didn't know about Zoom to get them on Zoom. And that's how they got to church, you know, via Zoom. It was a good thing. It's a blessing. It, I, the way I look at it, it came from God. All right. So there, but there's a downside to Zoom. Um, they said that students and educators alike can experience Zoom fatigue. Yeah, I get it. I'm tired right now, but I've got to keep going. Uh, we want, we try to limit the length of these uh, sessions. I try to limit them to, if they start at 1.30, they must end at three because after a while you become fatigued and um, things are being said or not being said and, you know, not so. Um, the, the other downside to it, it says it can be hard to read the interpersonal clues from those who are remote. That is true. Um, how do we address that? The instructor, I'm always available by phone. For those of you who have serious concerns, I get emails about Zoom sessions that didn't go right or questions. People say, well, I, I raised my hand and I didn't get an answer or whatever it is. I address those. You can always call me. You can. We have numbers. You can call the help desk. So we have a way of addressing those uh, interpersonal clues. Um, while Zoom calls are interactive, they still lack valuable opportunities for casual social interaction. So what did we implement? We implemented the lunch hour club and the other um, social events like the movie night, recipe club. So we're trying to at least uh, what. What are the downsides of Zooms? We're addressing them also. Now, this is something that came up um, recently. Now, as you entered, if each one of you, you were told as you entered into this classroom that this record, this meeting is being recorded by the host or, and in this case, it's the host, myself, WTA. It says upon entering WTA virtual classes, you are notified that the session is being recorded. At that time, if you decide you don't want to participate in a recording session, you have the option to exit. This is what you see on your screen. Am I not correct? So no one, no one can say, well, I didn't know I was being recorded. No, don't go there. You do know you've been given that choice. Everything is being recorded. Why? Let's find out. All right. Recording of Zoom sessions have great benefits, such as sharing videos and others after the meeting has ended. Participants may benefit from a recording of a session if they want to review content later, have documented accommodation, or if they cannot attend due to internet access Ill issues or illness. That's why it's being recorded. Your benefits. Do we have, here's something else that came up recently. Wildtech has the copyright to all training sessions, whether delivered by WTA instructors or a guest presenter. You come on here and you present for whatever reason or the vendors do, it's all owned by WTA. No one can say we didn't give them permission because 
for you to come on board and present. And we do do we do allow seniors to present and they can earn a hundred dollars. We've allowed that in the past and we're continued to do so because we want seniors presenting topics of interest to other seniors. Once you agree to that, and that is our item to keep, not yours. You can do whatever you want, with, but you cannot say we didn't, you didn't give us permission to go back there. It is ours to keep. Okay, so if I want to bring back that presentation, I'll go in there for whatever reason later on and air it again. No one can say we didn't give them that right. You can't go there. It's now owned by WTA, copyrighted by WTA at that point, once it's aired on our Zoom meeting. All right, so we've come to the end. We also do, as you could see, Library trainings, we talked about that earlier. We do um, Juneteenth, so forth. We've now come to the end of part one. Now at this point, as we mentioned, the clock is ticking. We're gonna do the door prizes. Alex is now gonna come on board. Now I want you all to stay on board for next Friday because now that's when we're going to talk about the actual security features of your iPad. Who can access, who can access, how they can access, how to configure it. We'll get all of those things in the dark, bring them to light. Tatiana and I will be drilling down on how to understand your iPad better as far as security features. Alex would also be on board for that. So Alex, I'm gonna turn the mic over to you. I don't see any hands up raised to what we just covered. So we're gonna move right in now to the spinning of the wheel. Great, great. So again, hello everyone. I hope you learned something new today. Um, I have um, all of your names in this in this wheel. Um, and the last time I added names was 215. So you must have joined the meeting before 215 in order to be eligible for a door prize. Um, we are raffling off um, iPad accessories. So a keyboard, a stylus, or um, some earbuds. So I'll get your name down and contact you in regards to which prize that you would like. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we are going to go ahead and start with the, um, with the spinning. So can everyone see my screen? You can, but the names are all difficult. The, yeah, yeah, they're so kind of- yeah, they'll be highlighted um, once they once they're oh. selected. But as you can see, all of the names are on the right hand side. So um, I've been inputting them um, during the meeting. So the last time I again looked at the names is two fifteen. So you must have been in the class by two fifteen in order to be eligible. Again, we're going to be doing three names for today and also three names on this coming Friday. This Friday is part two of our securities features presentation. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and spin the wheel for our first winner. So let's go ahead and see who wins. So our first winner is Wanda Starr. Congratulations, Wanda. Thanks so much for participating in our program. I'll give you a call later this week confirming which prize you would like. Again, a keyboard, um, an earbuds, or a stylus pen. So thank you so much, Wanda, for participating today. Um, next up, we're going to do our second prize. So the, um, Ms. Wanda, she's out of the wheel. So it's everyone else left able to win a prize. So let's see who our second winner is. So Cassandra, congratulations, Cassandra. Thank you so much for hopping on today's call. Again, I'll be giving you a call later this week to see which iPad accessory that you would like. So Thank congratulations, you. Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. And last but not least, let's see who is our third winner. Miss Helen, congratulations, Miss Helen. Again, you have won an iPad accessory. I'll give you a call towards the end of this week to see which iPad accessory that you would like to uh, receive. So 
Again, thank you so much, everyone, for participating today. We'll be raffling off three more prizes um, this coming Friday afternoon when we're doing the second part of our security features presentation. So, again, thank you so much. I had fun making this wheel, and you all have a wonderful day. Yep. Thank you. Alex. Thank you, Mr. James. You're more than welcome. We hope that we've answered your question so far. Please have more questions on Friday because we're addressing about file sharing on Fridays. Who could, if you get someone's permission to share a, a file, who can go in there and make changes to it? Yeah, we'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at adware. You go and download something online and with it came something, a virus or whatever. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Tatiana, what else do you think we're covering on Friday? Uh, we're gonna be going more into depth about, um, um, well, that might be later down the line, that might be part three, but we're gonna be covering overall like um, what Zoom sharing means, um, things like that, um, as well as um, what, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, sharing, file sharing and collaborative workspaces with your apps, such as um, um, Pages, that's an example. And we're covering that because we've got the recipe book club who have been sharing files and claiming or stating that document information is being removed from it or added to it. You need that's to a true statement, Teresa. You need to understand how it works. Please tune in on Friday to understand how it works. Okay. Come with your cares, your concerns on Friday. Also come with your heart open to win a gift. That's the that's the best. That's the, one of the takeaways. But even more, you can't do wrong. Uh, you can't go wrong by learning more about your device. Uh, that's right. That's hmm. right. You gotta know your device. That's okay. Right. So I look forward to seeing all of you on Friday. I want to see more. Right now we've got about 90 to 100 on board here. We're open for more. If we got to take this to a third session, we're gonna do what we need to do. Um, Teresa, can they can y'all find out like how much uh, Apple charge for the insurance for the iPads? We can do all those things. Just come with those questions next week, and then we'll if we have to have a third session, we'll do that. Too. Okay, so that's why I was asking. We are here to make you feel safe about your device. Can I call Tatiana to help me get my um? I didn't hear that question. Can I call Tati on the desk to help somebody give me my app ID back? Back? Yeah, so yeah, there's there's three associates that work on the help desk. So just call that number if you need assistance. That's all you have to do. Okay, thank you. Anything else before we leave? Thank you and thank you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Here's you, Mr. Visa. We are here right. to serve you. Thank you, Alec. Thank you, Tatiana. No I need a question. I have a question. Though. Thank you, everybody. I have Bye -bye. a question. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. I this is Mrs. Question. Ducky. Thank you. Thank you. Alex. Teresa and Ella. Thank you. Today's session was very informative. Mm. Alex. Miss, Alex. Miss, yes, You Miss, called Miss, Helen. It's two Helens. What was the last yes, name? It was your, it was you, ma'am. So you, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Nope, thank you. No problem. No problem. You have a great day. Thank you. Everyone have a great day. Thanks so much for attending. See you guys um, next time on Zoom. Same to you. Okay. You too. You. Okay. Bye. Bye. I'll see y'all later. Bye. 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 Bye.